Peace, reflect, she ain't shy. But I will never leave her. And I don't trust the soul. I don't who this kill Caesar. Her mess in his way. Judas turned on cheesy. Let's not act like Jay and Damon. Hold on, hold on. Mm. Can y'all see me? One, two, man. Mm, can y'all see me? Yeah, guys. Oh, okay, okay. Y'all can see me now. Cool. Yeah, y'all. We're gonna fight. I got a little, little cough, a little slight cough. We're gonna fight through it, though. We're gonna fight through it. <coughs> the message must get out. Peace, reflections. Yeah, my goofy ass got caught in the rain last night, and I got a little slight cough. I damn near wasn't going to get a lecture. I was just going to rest up and then give it tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got to meditate. I got to meditate, drink my lemon um, my lemon juice and my bacon soda, some water, meditate, a couple push-ups, so I'll be good by the a.m., you feel me? I don't do no, we don't do no medications in this house, you feel me? But yeah, y'all know the rain ain't real. It's manufactured. So one thing about me my whole life, if rain water ever touched my hair or my feet, you know what I'm saying? I always get like sick from that. You feel me? Like my whole life. Like now, regular water, nah. But that artificial rain water, man, that shit always fucked me up, y'all. So yeah, my goofy ass got caught in the rain last night, y'all. <coughs> How y'all feeling though? So yeah, man, yeah, yeah, it ain't gonna stop the lesson though. We finna get through this. And then y'all know I'm smoking. So. I wasn't even coughing earlier. Now I'm starting smoking. I should be scratching my chest up and got me coughing now. Um, well, I'll be right. I'll be right, y'all. Look, y'all just came in here. That's what's up. I don't know if y'all know, man. This just dropped Black Power Moves. You know, we bring the music with a message back. All high vibrations, man. We just raising the frequency of the planet. Because y'all listen to music every day. We need vibrations, it's a frequency war. It's a frequency war. Let me put y'all on game about some natural, some natural nutrients. Y'all ever get any colds or y'all feel like y'all getting any form of ailments to the body? You do not need to go get no Robitussin, no Mucinex, none of that. All you need, like real life shit, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Lemon juice. Bacon soda, man. That's all you need, reflections. So I got to teach y'all about the old school way. You feel me? Gotta, gotta enlighten you. Let me... Let me be the example. Cause my silly ass got caught in the rain last night. So let me be the example. You know, so now y'all know. You feel me? Let me enlighten y'all, man. Let me enlighten the multitude per usual. Let me enlighten the multitude per usual. Hmm, what's upset? Now listen here, I'm letting y'all know right now, this shit nasty, but you just gotta knock it back. I'm talking about this gonna knock everything out of you. In a matter of hours, you're gonna be steady pissing, shitting, 
coughing it up. It's coming out of you. You feel me? I don't care what it is, nigga. You, especially how y'all to be drinking. Y'all get a hangover, man. Y'all to be knowing what to do. Listen, man, it ain't nothing that pure lemon juice. It's pure lemon juice. Bacon soap. Sit, B. Got rained on. <coughs> Got our ass bit up by mosquitoes last night. Get my little back scratcher. It's my little back scratcher, y'all. And look, the crazy thing, the crazy thing, y'all, is I got a lecture coming up on mosquitoes, too. Well, they was fucking me up last night. They must knew, they must knew the lecture was coming. They like, oh, we gonna fuck him up. He gonna wake up. He gonna be a little, I'm talking about, bro, they fucked me up right here. This shit was, boy, this shit was itching so bad last night. It woke me up out my sleep. This little mosquito, I got them all on my back, all over me. But this little one right here, y'all, woke me up out my sleep. Y'all probably can't even see that motherfucker, but that motherfucker got an itch to it. I'm trying to tell you. You feel me? They tried to hit me with that juice or something. No, no. That thing out, I like, got a... Well, that motherfucker got a real life itchy itch to it. All right, y'all. So I ain't gonna let y'all let y'all know this shit nasty, but pure lemon juice and baking soda, man. Feel me? This chemistry, too. You know, we got the lemon juice. You put the baking soda in there, then you wonder why the suds come to the top. Chemical compounds. See what I'm saying? A little chemistry right here. Got a little live chemistry going reflections. <coughs> we gonna let it settle down. Okay, we hit it again. You feel me? Uh, uh, uh. <coughs> Three times. Three times, y'all. There we go. Where my water at? Cause this shit nasty. I need I need immediate flavors on my taste buds. You hear me? I need immediate flavors on my shit. And I know y'all still walk walking in class. For those of you just getting in here, Rashad Jamal got rained on last night, so I'm a little little under the man-made weather. You know what I'm saying? I guess they thought it was gonna stop the lecture, but nigga, we gon' we gon' nigga, we fighting through it like 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 Jordan nigga in the 97 finals, nigga. You hear me? This this gotta get out today. <sighs> Trying to tell you. Nigga got the, the straight sour patch kid face. You hear me? You can't fake that if you want it to, you hear me? I know my mother was screenshotting me now. Boy, that's some screenshots for your ass. You know, y'all be screenshotting some shit. You hear me? Boy, you can't fake this shit if you want to. It's going to do that to your ass. You hear me? But guess what? It's natural. It's pure. And it worked. You're not putting any medicines in you. You're not going to the hospital. Be a, I got to call anyone to the hospital so they can say you got... Oh, almost that. They almost caught me, guys. Not gonna say, I can't say that on here. I know. Other people can say that word for whatever reason. You know, Rashad Jamal, I can't say that word. You know what I'm saying? I, and guess what? Why is y'all steady asking me why am I not live on Instagram? G, why is y'all playing me like that, G? I'm still blocked. I just got my Facebook back. I was on Facebook Live last night. I ain't say shit. I just got on there. I was on some whole other shit. You feel me? I was just cool and I got on there just to see if it worked. Because. They sent me emails last week and I tweeted it out. Facebook like, we gonna let you get it. And I wasn't able to go live all week. Last week. So, so I'm like, man, Facebook was playing with me. So when I tried it last night, it worked. Like, oh, okay, cool. <coughs> but I ain't say nothing though, you feel me? Knock this last little bit down. <sighs> Woo! Mm, mm, mm. I need immediate flames on my show. I need a immediate flavors, y'all. For real. That's the right there. My grandma and my mama used to make us drink that shit growing up. That was it. It worked though, but that motherfucker dangerous, you know what I'm saying? 
But yeah, man, I just gave y'all some quick game. For y'all that know natural. Yeah, ain't gonna look natural lemon juice and bacon soda gonna smack. I don't care what's in you. That's what's coming out of you. You hear me? A motherfucker could, could lose his dick in you. You drink that, it's coming out of you, guys. You ain't gotta worry about it. It's coming out of you. We in here, y'all. Let me take a seat today. Don't mind if I do. You hear me? All right. Come in here today. If we got to make a part two, that's what we'll do. We know how they do us. All right, y'all. So be prepared if they try to do it. Well, actually, we're talking about Larry Hoover. And we're talking about the 4th of July. That was a surprise, y'all. It's a double lecture today. Because it's not just about Larry Bernard Hoover. Um, It was also about today, Independence Day. Because it's kind of funny how um, Larry Hoover has a, a known, worldwide known gang known as Gangster Disciples, right? <coughs> and they are known as the GDs. But... The GD is also called this seven full day. I'll get into all that later in the lecture, but um, before we get going, you know what I'm saying? Let me just say uh, I'm live on my website all this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Next week, my, I'm going I'm to open the, the website up free to the public for six days. Um, last month, we did it free for three days, but I think I'm going to do three, six, or nine, depending on the month. So this month, we'll open it free to the public for six days. <laughs> So you'll be able to view all the lectures. Um, people that's on the website, please, the members, don't do what y'all did last month when we opened it free for three days and motherfuckers was like, why are the lectures cost? They gonna cost because we opening this shit free to the public. So if you a member, you just don't wait till the fucking, the little free trial is over with. But far as the everyday lectures, as long as you on time, you ain't gonna have to pay. Because like, I ain't gonna lie, like, if I say we're gonna go live at three on the website, right? And let's say you miss it. When you, by the time you get back, say you get back on there at 8, it'll say, it'll say pay. You see what I'm saying? So you've been missed it. So you have to just wait till the little, <coughs> the little free trial is gone. Once the free trial is gone, you know what I'm saying? Then you can just go ahead and, you feel me? Get all the videos again. And then people that's not members, when they say it's free, that means the only thing is free is for you to actually catch the everyday live lecture. So you want to be on time to class. Now me... I'm never on time in the class because I don't believe in time. I don't go off time. Secondly, the reason I'm never on time, y'all, is the way I keep the elites off my ass. I'm being censored on YouTube, censored on Facebook, censored on Instagram, all right? And I'm pretty sure some of them in my university, all right? That's just how they operate. So I like to throw my fuck off. If I say I'm going to go live at 3.30, I might not go live at 4.30. So I might not go live at 6. It don't matter. You better know I'm going to go live. You know what I'm saying? And if you've been, people have been following me for a long time, they're used to that. So... And I feel like it's worth it. It ain't like you got it. You on your phone. It ain't like you at a club in line waiting on me. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> if it was a club, or say I was doing a, a public speech at a huge university, no, nah, I'm going to be on time. That's different. Y'all ass sitting in there. Man, y'all ass at home, wherever the fuck you over the phone. So do some other shit while you waiting. You know what I'm saying? Or some people actually, I see they come in here. They be cool. They be chatting. I get in and see the chat, y'all. I, sometimes I comment. Sometimes I don't. But I always look at a chat before the lecture start just to see the temperature of the chat room, you know what I'm saying? I want to feel y'all energy out there. I have to feel the energy out there. The energy. Dun, 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 dun. All right, though, so, um, all right, so, first let me start, it's imperative, before we get started today, it's imperative that we open up this lecture with the right spiritual energy. So let me first by start, so let me first start by saying peace, I'm sending peace to all the gods and goddesses of planet Kai. Peace is an acronym. It means positive energy always creates elevation. All right. To the elders today, please, please bear with me, elders. If you've been in this university, you watch me on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, <coughs> you're on the website, wherever you watch these lectures from, whatever country you may be in, because I know it's people all in Angola, Uganda. Shout out to all the internet. If you overseas, drop your flag. Shout out to everybody overseas that's in the university. There's some, so many of y'all. So we basically around, we got the whole, we, we, we the whole planet, we everywhere, right? 
Oh, okay. Yeah, we everywhere, right? So, hold on, y'all. We everywhere, right? So, we everywhere, right? So, um, to the elders today, I know if you heard of Larry Hoover, unless you like come out the streets, you probably, there they go, so they dropping them flags. Shout out to y'all countries, man. All right, um, but to the elders today, this I definitely need, I'm sending you insight. I want you to listen to this lecture today with your soul, be open-minded. <coughs> um, because a lot of elders, when I'm saying Larry Hoover, you might immediately go, oh, why, why is he, this is supposed to be the University of Cosmic Intelligence. Why is he talking about a gang leader? You know what I'm saying? This, this is Rashad Jamal. This is Divine Insight, elders. So you got to understand that if I, if I shine a light on something, it needs to be shared. And this is my mini series too, y'all. This is the first of nine. You know, we know nine represents completion. But I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing little stories about different people. All right, I ain't gonna say their names, but today we, we started with Larry Hoover. He's a political prisoner, so I'm gonna be doing stories about political prisoners. This is my political prisoner mini series. I probably do them twice a month, do two a month, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, because our political prisoners don't need to be forgotten about. And then we got a lot of people don't even know what a political prisoner is. All right, um, so we're gonna address all that. So I, I'm just asking the elders to bear with me tonight, you know, bear with us this evening. All right, um, we also going to address July 4th itself. Like, <clears throat> today is Independence Day. Nobody should be celebrating this day. But at the same time, people going to celebrate it regardless. Feel me? I know, like, it was just my daughter. This is actually my daughter's um, birthday weekend. Her birthday was Friday, so we got her some cupcakes. Popped a couple five crackers. That's why my ass in here now. Like, <coughs> coughing and shit. We good. We got that popping fireworks for her birthday, uh, for her solar day the other day. Popping fireworks, got her some cakes, all that. So, people gonna celebrate for different reasons. But let, but let me be honest. Even if it wasn't my daughter's solar return, I, my ass would have still been popping fireworks. See, I'm a pyromaniac. I'm the one that actually pop fireworks. I like to actually pop fireworks, you know what I'm saying? But when I popped them, I never celebrated them like for Independence Day. You know what I'm saying? Where I come from, I always celebrated it at least from nine up at seven four day. Uh -huh. And that's that for seven four day. So that's why I was always celebrating it. As far as celebrating it for actual Independence Day, honestly, I don't think no black person or Latino person really ever celebrated it for that. As far as any holiday, we don't know the essence of none of these holidays. We just grew up into this shit. And what we remember is that holidays was always the best time because your family come together, you have fun, memories get made. So, I'm not attacking anybody today. I'm not telling you if you don't want to pop your fireworks, you can pop them. I'm just giving you history about 4th of July today, Independence Day, and this political prison, Larry Who. <coughs> so, today is like I say, it's a double left. I told y'all, there it go, coming right on up. It's a double, it's a double lecture. See, that lemon shit working already. All that shit coming out. Want stay in there? No, you want not in this avatar. Yeah, no, so how the heck did you take this from? All right, so that's a double lecture today. We're going to start with, with, for, with Independence Day, and then we're going to slide right into Larry Hoover and what the GDs are, what the BDs are, because it matters. We're going to dive deep. And I don't give a fuck how no GD feel. I don't give a fuck about no nigga trying to hit me up like, hey, man, why did you say all that? In the now, I, I got to make my lectural point. You feel me? I got to make my point. And I honestly believe Larry Bernard Hoover himself, if, if he hear about this lecture, he's actually going to be proud of me for actually representing him in a positive light. Something the media I never do. You see what I'm saying? I, to be honest with y'all, I'm literally in the vision of Larry Hoover. Like, I'm in his vision. Like, I follow the vision. That's how I was even working on myself. I started working out. I started even trying to die. Because of the true vision. You know what I'm saying? You got a lot of people that say they GDs and they don't even know. You know what I'm saying? What the vision even is. You see what I'm saying? 
or they know, but they not living it out. You know what I'm saying? If you out here and you call yourself a GD or even a BD or a Crip or a Blood, but we ain't talking about Crips and Bloods today. They get enough. They get enough exposure. The BDs too. We talk about GDs today. It's seven four day. We talking about GDs today. We talking about an organization that the world need to know. A militant organization that has been hidden behind the disguise of a gang. We ain't never been no gang. We was always an organization. See, you got to watch how they word shit. You know what I'm saying? But that's what we talk about today, elders. All right, now, just bear with me. I mean, we're going to make it all make sense. To my peers, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, a lot of y'all don't even know nothing about Larry Hoover at all. All you about know is that he's supposed to be a leader of the game. You know how many people not GD, so they have no clue. And you know how many people G claim GD, and they do all type of dumb shit. So when you do dumb shit and you claim something, that reflects on the whole. You get what I'm saying? What one does reflects on the whole. That's the anything in life. See what I'm saying? So this is why it's this, this, this false narrative about Larry Hoover and GDs. But a lot of y'all that sit here and come in this university, I'm literally in the vision of, of the honorable chairman of like, and this seven four day is real. You see it been right there on me. I don't know if y'all ain't never paid attention to that in my lectures, but that's always seven four. That's what that stood for, growth and development. You know what I'm saying? Y'all probably never pay attention to it, but it's been there forever. And it just get there today. <laughs> you feel me? It ain't get there no time in soon. It should be there since I was about 13, 14. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's an old school tech. You feel me? So all I'm saying is we going to learn a lot today for the peers. And then for the youth, those 21 and under, y'all definitely need to be in here. Especially if you call yourself a part of this organization. You definitely, a lot of y'all is completely lost. You feel me? Completely lost. And that wouldn't be y'all fault, but y'all is. You feel me? So to the youth today, you're going to learn about who Larry Hoover is. He's a political prisoner. You're going to also learn about Independence Day. So we're going to learn what the true Independence Day is and why it is not to be celebrated by us as, as aboriginal beings. And then we're going to flow right into Larry Hoover. So we're starting with Independence Day. All right, everybody, we're on the same page. Cool. All right. If you're just walking in here, welcome to the university. If you don't want your kids hearing about this, take their fucking phone away from them. <laughs> if you if you if you if you coming in here on some game bag and shit, because you know it's gonna be somebody in the comments. I'm not even gonna read the comments. You know it's gonna be somebody in the comments. GDK. There's gonna be somebody in the comments. Some about they BD, BDK. There's gonna be somebody that's gonna like completely away from what the lecture is about. So I'm not feeding into that. I'm asking y'all to send this university. Don't feed into no comments. You didn't come in here to listen to no niggas comment. That's probably broke as shit. You feel me, motherfuckers that sitting behind the camera broke, ain't accomplished nothing in life. You came here to listen to me, somebody that's not broke, mentally, physically, spiritually, and have a, has accomplished much in life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even know how y'all listen to motherfuckers in the comments. That ain't accomplished shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to listen to somebody that accomplished shit or they actually accomplished shit. And I don't want to hear what you're telling me. Show me. You, I want to see it. You feel me? Well, that's what I'm listening to. You feel me? I ain't trying to listen to no other motherfucker that's just in the comments behind the computer, nigga. You know what I'm saying? That they probably don't even own. Niggas is going to be get, get evicted. That's why I tell a lot of trolls, like, how you, like Young M.A. said, how you a hating ass nigga about to get evicted? A lot of y'all be in the comments definitely trying to troll me. Like you can't troll the one that the, that, the, that, 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 that they sent. I was sent down here to do this. And, and, my, and the ancestors going to make sure I'm good. Because they want me to be comfortable while I'm, while I'm handling the mission. You feel me? So you're going to always see me living luxuriously or have I want to live. If I want to wear crystals, I'm going to wear them. But if I want to put on... <clears throat> diamond chain, fat ass diamond chains and go give all my money to the fucking jewelers and buy nothing but diamonds and shit that don't even cost that much like I could but I would never do that. You know what I'm saying? I might get a diamond ring or something too like that. Something like little earrings, you know. I ain't, But I ain't gonna overdo it like because I already know what's going on. Alright, so we all on the same page. Let's start with 4th of July. Fuck 4th of July. Let me just say that right there straight like that. Fuck the 4th of July. All right. Now, what is the 4th of July? Because we rise in the frequency, y'all. Today is, if you if you play with the numbers on it, it's 7-4. You know what I'm saying? July 4th. <coughs> July 4th. July 4th, right? So, with today being July 4th, right? With today being July 4th, all right? Nobody never thinks about the actual day. So, we're going we gonna to we gonna bring the laptop up. We're going we gonna to get into something real quick. I know I got it pulled up. That's why I said I had to do this lecture. I could have not gave the lecture. I could be laying on the couch. You know what I'm saying? I could be out there meditating. 
You know what I'm saying? Worker healing up real quick. But nah, I'm going to do that after I get off here. You see what I'm saying? Let me go ahead and get y'all right real quick. All right, so Independence Day. Let's dive into it. Let's dive into this shit, man. I hope it's some moors in here, too. So we can go ahead and break down these moors today. Okay. <clears throat> so this is Independence Day. Let's really look at what Independence Day is. Okay. Let's look at it. Independence Day is a federal holiday in the United States commem commemorating the Declaration of Independence. So let's look at what we're celebrating, y'all. The Declaration of Independence, all right, of the United States on July 4th, 1776. Now, what was the Declaration of Independence? Let's click in there for those who don't know. This is how it looked. Also, let the record reflect that it was Moors, it was Moors that helped um, these Europeans or these, or, these, or these invaders come up with this Declaration of Independence. Okay? Let the record reflect that. So basically, the Declaration of Independence, all right, explained why the 13 colonies who were at war with Great Britain regarded themselves as 13 independent sovereign states, no longer under British rule. Okay, so that's the Declaration of Independence. So before we get up off here, we don't have to go into what 13 mean because I've always told y'all that 13 is significant to the elites because it represents the original 13 bloodlines, which were the original 13 families, human being families, racist families that aligned with the draconian reptilians in the beginning. All right. This was all before our fall per 1492. Okay. Per 1492, y'all. All right. Now. Let's go back. All right. So I want to address two things here. First, let me address the fact that when they telling you that the 13 colonies went to war with Great Britain, it's called doing American Revolution. You see it? The American Revolution was an ideological and political revolution that occurred in colonial North America between 1765 and 1783. They said in the American Revolution, the Americans in, are the 13 colonies. So in the beginning, America was just 13 colonies. That's what they taught you in history, right? And they said that during the American Revolution, the 13 colonies defeated Great Britain, and this is what was known as the American Revolutionary War. And this is the war that allowed the 13 colonies to form their own country that we now know as the United States of America today. This is a picture of um, a committee of five presenting its draft for approval by Second Continental Congress on June 28th. 1776. All right. So the American Revolution was basically when when the 13 colonies declared their independence from Great Britain. Or so they say. OK. So. They they got us celebrating this day because they teach us in school that it was all about the 13 American colonies separating from Great Britain. OK, <clears throat> this is what we are taught in American schools every day. OK, that we celebrate this day, Independence Day, because this is the day that America, the 13 colonies, gained their independence from Great Britain. All right? This is what they teach you. All right, now let me enlighten you. Let me, let me, I just had to show you that. I just had to show y'all that. All right? Let me, let me just teach this to the side for a second. Let me do this. All right? Let me do that. And let me do this. OK? 
Okay. <clears throat> now, there might be a lot of pause back and forth because that lemon juice kicking in. I got to spit this shit out. I can't hold it in. All right? But we're going to get the message out. Okay. So, let's talk about what really happened on this day that they call Independence Day. Remember, I have always talked to you, talked you all about the great invasion of, of 1492, right? And that is when these, these aliens, because you can call them that, because they're foreigners, they were holding this when this other species of beings invaded our planet, all right? And when they invaded our planet, they made us fall in frequency. That war started in 1492. 17, what they're calling 1776, because we know time ain't real, age ain't real. What they're calling the year 1776 was the day when the war ended with us. See, this is what they lie to you at in history. They got you believing that they, America, went to war with Britain. And America was 13 colonies who... Defeated Great Britain, and then they gained their independence, and then they then expanded to be to thirteen to become thirteen states, which later expanded further to become fifty states to make up this United States of America we now have here today. But let me enlighten you: the thirteen colonies were what? What are their genetic makeup? They were what? Human beings. And not only were they human beings, they weren't any type of human beings. They were the rich, white, racist human beings, the elite. That we call the elite today. These are the same 13 colonies that will later go on to make up the families that we now know as Illuminati, the Boule, the Rockefellers, the Billburgers Group, the Black Nobility. You know, they go by a lot of different names now. Knights Templars. All right. But in the, in the beginning, they were just 13 families of human beings that decided to help these draconian reptilians and Pleiadians invade our planet. <clears throat> That's what you got to know. That war started in 1492, Reflections. Okay? It ended 1776. They finally defeated us. And then they laid, then they enslaved us. So you, you got to remember, time isn't real. But we're going to use the numbers they're using just to give you a, a research reference. Okay? So, the war starts in 1492. It ends 1776. 1776, they, they, by, when they defeated the last of us, they then went to enslave us, okay? <clears throat> Once they finally defeated us, they then enslaved us, all right? Remember, when, they, when the war started in 1492, they made us fall in frequency. Hold on, y'all. They made us fall in frequency. <coughs> they made us fall in frequency. When the war started in 1492, right? When the war first started in 1492, y'all, they come to our planet. I might as well stand up because that shit coming to bother me. I might as well stand up for a minute, y'all. I ain't gonna lie. So look, in 1492, when they came to our planet, they, the war starts. The war starts like they come in 1492. The war probably started in 1493. They was here probably, once again, there was no time. But I want to give y'all some reference, some frame of reference. So... I'm going to say it like this. They came to our planet in 1492. They was cool with us for one year. They took that whole one year to get to know us, get cool with us. They made us think they was our friends. The Pleiadians did. <coughs> and during this moment in time, this is when we were helping the human being race. Okay? All the human being race, even the 13 families, which were later going to be the 13 families, originally when they first came here, they still had tails growing out their ass. They still had they still had tails growing out spit in there. They still had tails growing out their ass. Y'all feel me? They still were, were covered in fur when human beings first got here. The 13 colonies, too. They were later going to become the 13 colonies and blood families. In the beginning, they were all, they all came the same. They came to our planet through portals in the Caucasus Mountain region. They could not walk up straight. They were like this on all fours. 
we was kind of scared when we seen him. Like, <sighs> not scared as in like a punk, but like, what the fuck is that? Like, we didn't know what the fuck they was until the Pleiadians told us. You see what I'm saying? They told us what Zeus had did on Earth. We like, oh, so this is the result of Zeus's basic science project, basically. Basically, this is Zeus's science, science experiment, a.k.a. Satan. This is a science experiment that went bad. That's how we looked at it. Now, remember how they showed you on Wakanda how they were open to the white guy they brought him into Wakanda? Remember that? That was real symbolic because that's what we did to, to the Pleiadians. When they landed, <coughs> the human beings were still hiding in the caves. Remember I told y'all that? The Pleiadians came first, came out first and greeted us. <coughs> the human beings, after they greeted us and, and, and made sure everything was cool, then they, they told us about the human beings that also were in that cave. That they, and they told us, look, the, this is the Pleiadians had told us, y'all. <coughs> they lied to us. When we were trying to figure out, okay, well, we know that Zeus created these human beings. We know that. We whooped his ass here on Kai and told him he had to get the fuck on. He couldn't do it here. So he went on there and created these this this human race and these vampires and werewolves and the the the, the Igors, which is Igor race actually exists. The Igor is what Shrek is. The movie Shrek is based on an actual species called Igors that actually exists on planet Nern. So when Zeus was on Nern, he was a mad scientist, Satan. You call him Satan, y'all call him Satan. His real name Zeus. He a mad scientist. He was mixing and making all type of fucking with all type of shit on Nern. Feel me? He made vampires, werewolves, Igors, human beings. Feel me? The dark elves who created the Sub-Zero technology you now know is winter here on your planet. All right? So, the Pleiadians came out the caves first, y'all. They came out in peace. I Like I always told y'all, they bitch ass came out like, we come in peace. Because we warriors. So, when they came out our shit, because we, we felt their vibration. We knew they was on our planet. So if they didn't come out, we was coming in anyway. She was saying, we know y'all bitch ass here, nigga. So when they came, the Pleiadians being smart, they're like, we might as well just go ahead and go out there and try to make peace with them to see if we can get under, get good in good with them as opposed to trying to hide out in the caves, <coughs> study the scout, scout out the planet from the cave and then try to take over the planet like that. Because see, when the Pleiadians came, them and the draconian reptilians, remember, remember I told y'all the reptilians never even entered the realm. They stayed on the outside surrounded with, with spaceships. Okay? <coughs> these, oh, these draconian reptilians, they never came on this bitch. They stayed on the outside. They sent them the Pleiadians and the human beings. Okay? That's what you gotta know. They sent them the Pleiadians and the human beings. Okay? So, as we're going to the caves, the Pleiadians come out. See what I'm saying? It ain't like they was, it ain't like they landed on our planet and just came right out. No, they, be, they wanted to scout the planet out from the caves. We felt, their, we felt their frequency. And the planet was so on a high vibration back then, we felt them when they entered our realm. You know what I'm saying? We're like, what the fuck? We're going to go check this out. Why these beacons going off? You feel me? They bitch ass so scared. They come out there. <laughs> we we come in peace. And this is where this stands originally comes from them. This is how they was. We come in peace. You feel me? Because we was finna fuck them up, nigga. We don't come in peace. We spiritual warriors, nigga. We spiritual assassins, nigga. We come to, we are creators full of chaos energy, nigga. Remember on this planet, this wall, the spiritual warriors came that was from our home kingdom of Series X. Some of our top finest goddess and gods came down here. So you got to think who was on Kai. You got to think where Kai is gladiator school. Nigga, you done landed on the wrong planet. Boy, you done fucked around. Boy, they finna get you right. You got real life assassins down there on that planet. Galaxy destroyers, you hear me? Hold on, let me blow my nose and shit. Shit coming up. But y'all hear me? On this planet, 144,000 of our finest had came down here in the beginning. So on this planet, you have galaxy destroyers. 
Y'all feel me? I'm gonna break that down to y'all. Hold on. So, what is a galaxy? What is a what is a galaxy destroyer? I'm gonna break it down to you right now. <clears throat> 144,000 of our of plan of, of Sirius X's finest spiritual assassins came down here to create and build up Planet Kai in the beginning. All right. These, I'm talking about these 144,000 souls are so fucking powerful. They still here too. Many of you are still, y'all, y'all still here. Remember I told you y'all came in and y'all became fruitful and multiplied. Okay. So that original 144,000 multiplied. That's why it's so many of us. All right. We just keep coming and coming. Right. Because that's the way we set it up in the beginning. But the reason that the Pleiadians fear coming out is because everybody fear the Anunnaki goddesses in the cosmo. Everybody fear the Anunnaki because we are the creators. All right, we are the creators, and there's two different types of Anunnaki. I'm gonna break that down too today. Break it down. You got the Atlantean Anunnaki, and you got the Sumerian Anunnaki from the Sumerian text. They're my two different beings. We're gonna get into it. Because <coughs> the motherfucker tried to get into my post up there on Instagram, talking about some. He just un unenlightened. You know, he don't know. He, <coughs> we are not Anunnaki. The Africans made the Anunnaki. We are Titans. Tell them people the truth. And I'm like, man, young God. I'm glad I'm doing this, this, this lecture. I hope he's in here today. All right? We're going to get out into all that. So let's stay focused. But <coughs> the Pleiadians didn't want to come out. They didn't want to come out because you have galaxy destroyers on this planet. One Anunnaki, be it a young one or an old one, is powerful enough to destroy a whole planet by themselves. Who are the Anunnaki? Remember, the Anunnaki are the black and Latino people. So yes, all of you. One of you. All right? Just one of you. You feel me? Just one of you. you. Feel me? Just one of you. Listen to me now. One of you. Just all it takes is one. All right? One black or Latino, whether it's young or black, has the power in them to destroy a whole planet. Even if they are not woke. This is why the elites attack you so hard every day still to this day. This is the ancient truth about our species. Now, now, that's just regular Anunnaki. Ain't no regular Anunnaki come down here. The spiritual sasses, the guardians of the galaxy, <coughs> the Anunnaki's finest came down here. And these are galaxy destroyers. So that means these 144,000, one of just one of them are so strong, fuck a planet. They have the ability to destroy an entire galaxy, which is a galaxy is composed of what? 999,000 planets. That's what a galaxy, 999,999 planets. That's what a galaxy is composed of. All right? So this is how powerful you these beings are. Galaxy destroyers. Just by one by yourself. So, that's why the Pleiadians wanted to scout. They wanted to scout our planet out from the caves. But it couldn't work. Once again, you got galaxy destroyers down there. Some of the strongest Anunnaki's of the Anunnaki. So, the Pleiadians ended up coming out the caves and they, we come in peace. And us, yeah, we are fighters, but we are also, we are also, we have always been pure souls. So, what does a pure soul mean? This means that we care, we are empathetic toward nature. We are empathetic toward other beings. We've always been that way anciently. Black people, Latino people have never been these violent people who are unempathetic to others. That, that just started recently when it's been taught and, and putting us through the food and the poisoning. We have always been empathetic to, the, to everything because we are the creators. So every little thing, microorganisms and all, we created. We understanding that was always the most empathetic because basically everything in the universe and everything you see around you is your baby. It's your baby. Everything comes from you. So ain't that like a father 
when he push out a son or a daughter, or a mother when she push out a son or a daughter. Yeah. All right. So we always anciently we saw every we saw everything for what it was as a connection to us as our children because we created every little thing around us. And we only multiply. So this is what makes us each other's reflection because we is only still one supreme soul and we just multiply <coughs> ourselves. So this is why you're supposed to see every even being as the, a reflection of you because that's what it is. All right. So when these when these Pleiadians come out the caves, they tell us about these human beings. We didn't know what the fuck was a human being. We didn't know what that was. It never existed. What the fuck is a human being? And then they go get one. So they bring it out. And we see it. And then they go get more. And more will come out. You know what I'm saying? Then thousands of them come out. We like, what the fuck? What the fuck is that? Are they another form of animal? Because they looked like animals. And the Pleiadians being able to communicate. Because the human beings didn't even be able to communicate. They weren't even able to communicate. All they could say, <laughs> like the, the monk, they was doing that. They they had no way of communicating. So the Pleiadians being telepathic and us being telepathic, because we were on a high frequency, we communicated with the Pleiadian race. And they let us know, like, hey, basically, your brother Zeus, who y'all went to war with, abandoned, <coughs> abandoned them. Now, y'all laughing, but I'm serious, though. Like, for real, you don't get the message. Like, your brother Zeus, who y'all went to war with, created these beings and then he abandoned them. He abandoned and left them. Left them just wrong. We found them roaming the universe. That's what they told us. They say we found them roaming the universe. They didn't tell us that they didn't went that that fucking these human beings then turned on Zeus, got kicked up, got, got kicked off their own damn planet and rounded up because they then destroyed their own planet. They then destroyed Nern, warring with each other. So motherfucking we didn't know that they war with each other so bad that Zeus had to get their ass rounded up and then send their ass to jail. We didn't know that. They went to jail. They went to jail. They went to planet Egypt, which is the planetary jail for rebellious spirits. We didn't know all that. You see what I'm saying? So we like, okay. We believe that maybe he could have created these niggas and, and maybe he created them and left them, left them for, for dry. Feel me? And if they ain't asked to be created, then you know that's not their fault. We've always see you gotta understand a lot of beings, a lot of y'all even right now watching the live, y'all so y'all vibrate so low that y'all might even can't even understand what I'm saying right now. People just just comment the comment, you know. You could tell the beings who vibrate low because they just commenting. People that's really vibrating high, they just listening. They not even commenting. Most most people that's commenting right now, if they not saying nothing positive, they are just low vibrational beings. You know what I'm saying? People that are like to try to jump in here and argue in the comments, like I like I'ma see it. I can't see your comment. So it makes no sense to jump in the live and try to argue with yourself in the comments. And if you feel like your intellect is that pro prolific, if you believe your intellect is that prolific, why not start your own YouTube channel? See, that's where y'all go wrong. You on somebody, you in my university, telling me what to teach in my school. No, go start your own school. This is my school. You don't like my teachers, go to another university. That's why you got you got freedom of the walk your ass off the live. Fuck you in here for trying to do it. That just shows how, how gifted you're not. You would, you would just start your own YouTube channel. It's free. Start your own YouTube channel. It's free. And make your own shit. And don't use my name. Don't put my name at the beginning of y'all shit. Oh, that's nothing. All y'all have been tagging my name. Not the good bloggers, but all y'all have been trying to tag my name and make negative YouTube videos about me to get views and make money off that. Boy, I'm coming for 900%. I need everything. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming for 900% because my name trademark. So when you use my name without my permission, you you setting yourself up for failure. And your, and your, and, and your money ain't long enough to even go to war with me on, the, on that financial level. Or, or you're not spiritually inclined enough to war with me on that level neither. You feel me? So just let y'all know. But let's stay focused here. So anyway... You know, these human beings, when they come out the when they come out the caves, you know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't know. We didn't know what Zeus did. We remember whooping his ass, trying to prevent him from doing it. But after that, he went about his way, and that's that. <coughs> so, when the human beings came out the caves, we being Atlant now here we go. Check this out. This is where the separation come in. We being Atlantean Anunnaki's. 
we are the Atlanteans. This whole realm is Atlantis. Okay? The Sumerian Anunnaki's. We're going to get into that. Okay? So, we basically assign a section of our, of, of gods, so these are black people, to help enlighten these human beings. <clears throat> so, what do I mean by that? I mean enlighten them. That means teaching them how to walk, teaching them how to walk upright, teaching them about the stars, astrology, basic mathematics. We had to create a whole mathematics system just for them because our math was too advanced for them. Our math is called Supreme Mathematics. That was too advanced for them, so we created something called arithmetic. A dumbed-down version that would at least help them be able to compute shit. Facts. They work, they, they don't they don't have a soul, so we couldn't teach them how to use telepathy and chi to communicate. So we had to create a whole system for them to be able to communicate. And that system was called the alpha beta system or alphabets. This is where they come from. And alphabets later led to once they matched the alphabets and after they took over, they later used those same alphabets and everything we taught them to turn those words into spells and use them for negativity to further enslave us after the fall. So <coughs> when you talk about 1776, right? You're talking about the conclusion of that war. And 1776 July 4th, 1776 was the exact day that they defeated our people, y'all. Yes, down here, these invaders. This day, on this day, July 4th, 1776, who you think the Pleiadians really gained their independence from? Us. Because this was our planet and they wanted it. Because they are, they are, Cosmic pirates, the Pleiadians, the Pleiadians, and the reptilians. They are cosmic pirates. So that means they go invade planets and drain it of their resources. This is what this extraterrestrial species do. They've been doing it. That's just who they are. Okay. So 1776, they defeated us. But now, this is what y'all need to know. This is where it gets good. This is where we find out about the, 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 the African Anunnaki and the Sumerian Anunnaki. This is where they come in at. Because basically what happened was this. We was at war with these human beings and these Pleiadians, these invaders. Our oppressors now, these invaders. We was at war with them. <coughs> and we had been warned with them since they came. Even after we fell in frequency, even after they started spreading oxygen into the air and we started changing in pigment, we went from these luminous bright colors to these copper complexions, we were still warm with them. We knew within, you feel me? We remembered, unlike today when most people forgot. Okay? So, but let me talk about July 4th, what exactly happened. So, remember I told y'all about the Moors, right? And what I want to say right now, a lot of y'all be talking about y'all moors and shit. And y'all fucking lying. Nigga ain't no motherfucking. It ain't even no more moors left on the planet, man. Y'all ass eating suck. Y'all eating dick. Y'all smoking dick. Remember, we talking with they got lips. Ain't no more motherfucking Moors on the planet. You know, be niggas talking about they Moorish American. How? How? How the fuck you Moorish American? You don't know nothing about the history of the Moors. I'm Moorish American. The Moors. But you don't even know who the Moors were. And if they're not even on the planet no more. Let me enlighten you. 
and who the Moors really were. First off, people be confused in Mu with Moor. The Mu people are not the Moors. This is what a lot of y'all be thinking. Let me pull it up. Okay. So, when you put in Mu, nothing gonna really come up. They gonna tell you this. Let's look at it. <clears throat> so this is what they say when we put in Mu. It says, Mu, the Mu, mythical lost continent. Mu is a legendary lost continent. The term was introduced by Augustus, that's a white person, European settler, the motherfuckers who conquered us. They have something they introduced some shit. Who used the land of Mu as an alternative name for Atlantis. <laughs> it was subsequently popularized as an alter, alter, al alternative term for the hypothetical land of Lemuria by James Churchward, who asserted the Mu was located in the Pacific Ocean before its destruction. That's what they say Moo was. So, now, check this out. So, check this out, right? Now. So, Turn the comments off. We can focus in here, man. Now, your bitch ass trying to interrupt class, take your whole ass on somewhere. Now you can't say shit. Now let's see how many people really want to learn. Alright. My university, bitch. You forgot I can shut you the fuck up and just cut the and cut the comments off, my phone. Let me remind you who got the real power here. Let me remind you who got the real power here. Now what you gonna do? In the live. The live end, y'all know that's the feds in here that wanna chat some shit. Remember, a lot of the comments, I'm a revolutionary, y'all. With supreme wisdom for y'all to help y'all remember. A lot of them comments be to make y'all think I'm lying. They be the FBI and the CIA behind them pages throwing shit out there to keep y'all thinking that I'm lying. Fuck out here. Y'all bitch ass up. Now. Now what? Bitch. Now what? Leave then, ho. Leave. Leave. Who, who else said? Who else was saying shit? Motherfucker was like, Rashad, you need a minute. Nigga, I'm sitting here with him. Cold, still lecturing. Something you would never do. So man, your ass would be chilling. So I'm saying somewhere, you'd be like, man, fuck them people. I'm gonna chill. But when you care about your people, you will let nothing stop you from delivering a message, my nigga. It'll never be another Rashad Jamal. It'll never be another divine insight, aka Rashad Jamal. You better know that. I only come down here once every every few energy cycles, nigga. I come down here once every few energy cycles, nigga. What the fuck is you talking about? I come back and visit this bitch to make sure shit's still running smoothly. And when it ain't. You know, and I don't come alone. We come back every few us, Nerubians, Anunnaki, 
the real Anunnaki. Not these motherfucking Africans who they try to pose as Anunnaki. Now let's break that down. What do I mean by that last comment I made? Not those Africans. First off, we know there's no such thing as Africa because that was named after the white person. Just keep your Africanists. So, why don't, why is there no more Moors here? <coughs> because they, the Moors, majority of the Moors were all destroyed in the battle they had with us. And they were later slaughtered off in Europe by their own, by the humans they helped. <coughs> so, <coughs> so, for y'all to understand what's going on, so if y'all understand what's going on, but y'all understand what's going on, right? You gotta understand that basically, like on this day, the only reason they defeated us is because it was the Moors who helped them defeat us. Okay? Uh, yeah, I said that. Yes. It was the Moors. Who helped them defeat us. Here what happened. We've been warned with them all these years, right? We did on this day, July 4th, we was damn near finna take the planet back. Like, out of all the years of warring with these people, with these, with these invaders, we were finally starting to gain our ground again. Because you gotta remember, when the war broke out, we assigned these Moors who, <coughs> who were later coined Africans. And Sumerian and Anunnaki, okay? These Moors originally were us, just regular gods and goddesses who we assigned to help the human being race. So what was the Moors' job? I told y'all already, to teach the human beings how to be civil again. We reverse engineered the tales, the animal genetics as much as we could. We taught them everything they know to this day. But guess what? Guess who was doing that, y'all? The Moors. The Moors were doing that. Y'all feel me? The Moors were doing that. The Moors were doing that. And I'm going to talk slow because I want y'all to keep up. The Moors were doing that. But while working with these human beings, the Moors were put under a spell. Let me repeat that. While working with the human being race that helped civilize them, the Moors were put under a spell. The spell was made by the Octarian race. The Octarians are an advanced group of extraterrestrials who are pro, they are profound in making spells. The, the Octarian species are the ones who created the time spell that we now live in that makes motherfuckers age. The Octorian race. The Pleiadians and Draconians went to get the fucking Octorians to help out. That's how bad we was fucking them up. Like, they couldn't do shit with us. Remember, we weren't just fighting against the humans. We was fighting against the human beings, the Pleiadians, and the Draconian reptilians. All right. <coughs> so the Octorians conquered up a spell, gave it to one of the human beings. The human being then did exactly what the Octorian told her to do. She asked one of the Moors, could she make him something to drink? While he was working, building, showing something, he said, yeah, she gave him a drink. And she didn't just do that to him. She she then proceeded to do this to the, all the Moors that was working with the humans. And this was done over a period of, of time, a little bit over a few months. What she gave them was potencies to break down their energetic fields to make them easier to control from these spells that will later be cast by these Arturians. And it worked. Because what happened was eventually, eventually 
Eventually, hold on, y'all. I was trying to see who that was to rung my doorbell. All right, so basically she put the spell on him, right? She put the spell on him, right? So when she put the spell on him, so when she put this spell on the Moors, the Moors then, being under the spell, gave the, the human beings access to our ancient technology. Remember, the Moors were us, but... <coughs> the ones who we assigned <coughs> to help the human race, the ones we assigned to help the human race, the morals were us. The ones we assigned to help the human race, we 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 named them Moors because that was the job. Like description, all right. It's just like if you're in the military, the people in the military they have a uh, MOSs. That's their military occupation specialty. And that'll be their job. Some people should be infantry. Some people be cooks. Some people be nurses. You feel me? So, basically, you know, like, once this spell was put on the Moors, which was the title we gave you, like, if you was one of the guys that was elected to go help out with the human beings, you were labeled a Moor. Okay? Let's stay focused here. Okay, now, after they were put under the spell, the Moors gave, this is how we lost, this is how the war even kicked off, all right? <clears throat> Without the Moors giving the human beings the, the access to our technology, our ancient access codes to our ancient technology, then we would still have our second son here and our crystal towers. It was the giving of our access codes. The human beings put the males under the spores, under the, under the spells, then got the Moors to tell them where the access codes were, right? The Moors gave up the access codes. The human beings gave the access codes to the Pleiadians. The Pleiadians went and used the access codes, found the ancient technology, and the first thing they did was blow the sun away. We had two suns. The first thing they did was blow the fucking sun away. Then the second thing they did was not blow up the, the pyramid towers we had, which killed our communication with each other. We immediately fell in frequency. The third thing they did was cut the trees down. Those were the major three steps they needed to do to get us to even get to the small state of how you see us today. <clears throat> so they got us there. But when they got us there and we fell, we was all smaller. And our pigments went brown and copper from what they was doing to us. We still were fierce fucking warriors because we are souls and spirits. Never forget that. <laughs> so the war continued. We were still fucking them up. Remember, human beings were small anyway. And the Pleiadians are, are a little bigger than the humans. So before they did that to us, we were the biggest things on the planet. We were gigantic. We stood 50 to 100 feet tall. Human beings was only 5 to 6 feet tall like most human beings are today. That's why if you're black or Latino and you stand between five, 4 feet, 5 feet, 6 feet, that's little as fuck. You were 50 to 100 feet tall. You're only that small because of what happened during the war. Feel me? Fell in frequency. Okay, so now, this is why we didn't see the attack coming. They attacked us from the inside out. So after they attacked us, now, now we at war with them for how, you know, we, we won forever. But on July 4th, 1776, so this is what, three, four hundred years after the war started, you know, it been, it's been, been a million casualties plus since then. We on this one day, which today, July 4th, we was in a battle for our lives. But this was the battle of all battles because we had gained so much ground in this war to get our planet back, y'all, that if we would have defeated them on, on July 4th, we would have got our planet back. And that's what was going That's what was happening. <coughs> so we forgot all about the Moors. We hadn't seen them niggas since motherfucking the beginning of the war. So on this day on July 4th, we in the battlefield. We won with they ass. We fucking them up. And they went and called for help. They went and got bag up. So when they went and got bag up, the Pleiadians and the human beings, 
We didn't know that they went and got back up. You know why? Because we was fucking them up and they retreated. They ran away. So imagine like being in a big ass field. <coughs> you and your friends, right? Let me break it down in lamest terms. You and your friends and your family, y'all in a big ass field, y'all find another family and then that other family runs away. Y'all be like, oh, well, we won, right? Or you're going to think at the least they're retreating, all right? So that's what we thought. So they leave. We still out there. All of a sudden, we see a million black motherfuckers coming over the sand. We like, who the fuck is that? We see them. And they had their little fez caps on. All right? I heard a couple elders tell this story before, but they wasn't lying. It's the truth. Um, shout out to the elder Remedy H. I think he was talking. He was talking about this like a few months ago. Um, but this is a fact. Like, they not lying to y'all when they telling y'all this is exactly how it went. Basically, we out there. We like, okay, we see all these black people. So we like, oh, shit. And then we see these little fez caps that they show you more is wearing and shit. So we see all these little fez caps and shit. We like, oh, shit. Then we like, oh, that's bro nymph. You know, like, the same way you would be today. You know what I'm saying? Like, we like, oh, that's bro nymph. Like, how you would be today? Like, if you in a fight and you need help, Yeah, so we on the we on the sand and shit. You feel me? We out there. <coughs> we out there. And we like, oh shit, it's bro them. You feel me? So we on the sand. Feel me? We're like, oh shit. That's bro now. They coming to help us. That's what we thought. Shit, we was already fighting, fighting with these fucking human beings and these fucking reptilians. I mean these Pleiadians. And it was a battle like a motherfucker. So when they, when they when the human beings retreated away during the battle, and this battle took place. Right? This battle took place. Right here on this planet, on this day, July 4th. So, when we see all these black people coming toward us, we're like, man, that's bro them. We knew who they was. We're like, oh, we ain't seen their ass in a minute. And we knew that they had betrayed us. But, we still. Being desperate in battle, we assumed, okay, we assumed like they here to help us. Boy, they ass came and got down on our ass. See what I'm saying? Like the human beings came right behind them. That's how it went. All right. They came over the sand. And that's how they got us to like when they came, they didn't start warring with us. They literally like got up on us. They started killing us. So we started killing their ass. And a whole other war broke out right there. But we was already warring with the human beings right before that. We not even know the human beings what to get there. Now we out there war with the Moors. Keep in mind, they, the Moors are still gods. So they have spirit, soul. They have the same power we have. So we we warming with ass like a motherfucker. And you know, it's harder fighting our own than it is fighting human beings and Pleiadians. Because the human beings and Pleiadians are not strong like we is. But we strong as, as fuck. Fighting, you fighting, you fighting another god. So while we fighting the fucking Moors, the human beings come jump back in. Then here come the Pleiadians. Then here come the reptilians. So now we basically, right here on this planet, we getting jumped. We fighting reptilians, Pleiadians, human uh, human beings. 
Moors, which was our own people. Fuck it, that was they was under a spell though. You know what I'm saying? Like, why you thinking? Have you ever seen like the old Superman cartoons where they show you? Yeah, they definitely backdoed our ass. Definitely. We are, today we call it backdoor. They backdoed the fuck out of us twice. All right. Now, but they, you know, they were under spells though too. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, go they ass got out there. Just man, they showed you that shit in Wakanda, man. Look, Wakanda got so much hidden gems in it from our true history. It's crazy. <coughs> in Wakanda, why do you think at the end when it went to that war, what happened on Wakanda? It was Wakanda fighting Wakanda. <coughs> Y'all remember that? That come from what happened in real life. That's how it went. And nigga, you know, we man, so. The human beings, what they did was they used us to defeat us, like they still do to this day, nigga. So when you see them out here having, having us kill each other right now, having us thinking it's the black, every time somebody black get killed, motherfuckers be like, oh, niggas love quoting that dumbass Tupac line. Like, I ain't gonna lie, I fuck with Pac, but I don't fuck with one line he said when he said, they say it's the white man I should fear, but it's my own kind doing not a killer here. That's one of the lines that Tupac rapped. That if, that if I was, like, older with Pac, I would have checked his ass behind that shit. Like, bro, what the fuck is you talking about, fam? Like, Lemmy would have been this age. <coughs> and Tupac was out. And I'm out, nigga. He would have fucked me up to that line, nigga. Because I would have checked his ass. Like, what you just say, nigga? Why would you just tell these people, they say it's our own kind we should fear, but it's the but they say it's the white man we should fear, but it's our own kind doing all the killing here. That's basically keeping a narrative going that we, it's our fault that this shit is happening to us and that's not the, what's going on. Feel me, nigga? So, that's how they defeated us on this day. Right here on July 4th, nigga. Right here on this day. That's, this is what they celebrated for. They finally defeated us wholly and now they finally got the rim. They started their company, the United States, 1776. It was black Moors who helped make the Declaration of Independence. Facts, nigga. And it was Moors who designed all the fucking cathedrals in Europe, nigga. Facts, nigga. Now, you need to ask why. And I'm just explaining to you why. A lot of y'all just got branch knowledge. I'm here to give you the seed knowledge. Because on, on Wikipedia, on Google, in school, they get your ass branch knowledge. Remember, it's a whole tree of knowledge. They just get your ass the branch. You got to figure out how the fuck the tree grew. See what I'm saying? To know what happened, you just can't look at that branch and be like, well, that branch has a leaf on it. It's a whole story to how that leaf grew. And before that leaf was on that branch, that branch was on that tree. And before that tree was a tree, it was just a little, it was in the ground, just a seed. You know what I'm saying? I'm, you got to get to the seed of shit. That's why when motherfuckers be in the comments coming, you commenting from a branch point of view. Nigga, I'm divine insight. Nigga, I'm not even, I'm not even from, like, come on, bro. Like, I sit in front of you in this way. I use certain words in this way so y'all can relate. I'm a true life foreigner to this planet right now. Like, I'm just, I'm a medium, man. Like, I ain't gonna never tell you shit wrong. You feel me? Like, this is the supreme facts of July 4th. This is the day they defeated us, nigga. This is the day they finally defeated us. And then they enslaved us right after this day. You feel me? And they used our own black fucking moors to do it, nigga. And then in Europe, after they, after they enslaved us, then they used the moors who were still under spells to that design Europe. And the Moors helped them design Europe, built everything. The Moors did. And then, after they got tired of the Moors, they killed their ass the fuck off. Go look at the European Moors wars, nigga. Because remember, let me, fuck, y'all ain't gotta look up shit. I'm the teacher. I'll pull it up for you. Let me pull up the, because they don't tell you how it got there. I'm, I'm just connecting. I'm giving y'all the seats, nigga, on the boss, nigga. You hear me? Listen. Check this out. Check this out. Let me pull it up, man. Pull it up, man. <clears throat> they be trying to play me like I ain't. Come on, man. And everything I can't pull up. That's why I just give it to you like this. Some things I can't do. Up. Oh. Let's here we go. Okay. They like to call it the Reconquista. Everybody pay attention. Comments off for a second. <coughs> I'm cutting the comments off. Everybody pay attention. This is what I want y'all to see. Now, I told y'all that they used the Moors to defeat us on this day today. And after they defeated us, they enslaved all the Anunnaki, Anunnaki gods and goddesses. 
Then they need, then they turn around and use the Moors to build up Europe. The Moors being still under the spell that they've been under from the fucking um, Arcturians went along to help the Europeans build up Europe. Now, as soon as they got through making Europe, the Moors, so the Moors helped the fucking human beings not only capture the fucking Anunnaki gods and goddesses, but they then turned around, they then turned around and helped build up modern day Europe. They also are the ones that set up the United States of America. Like, like hold on before I read that. The whole way we look at the structure of this country is around, based around what? The Constitution, the preamble, and the fucking Declaration of Independence. Do you know why? Who you think it was that told them they should have a Declaration of Independence that they want to keep a slave? The Moors taught them that. The Moors told them that. The Declaration of Independence is a fucking big-ass spell, nigga. The preamble is a fucking big-ass spell, nigga. And when you recite it over and over, why you think they make you pledge allegiance to the flag, nigga? You're pledging your soul to that bitch, nigga. That's a spell, nigga. Who you think taught them to come up with a flag? Who you think the Moors did, man? The Moors did. Now, all right. After they got through, after they got tired of dealing with the Moors, they eradicated their ass. This is why to this day right now, there are no more Moors on the planet. You know why? Because the era was called the Reconquista. Okay? So today we learned about something in class, y'all. The Reconquista. Okay? Now, what was the Reconquista class? The Reconquista was a centuries-long series of battles by Christian states to expel the Muslim Moors, who from the 8th century ruled most of the Iberian Peninsula. Okay? So, you know, of course they're going to add these lies. But look, date, 801 to 1492. That's a lie on that date. Who defeated the Who defeated the Moors in Europe? At the Battle of Tours, see what I'm saying? Why did the Moors, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, the Moors were wiped out, nigga, by the same motherfuckers they helped. All of them. All right? Now, for you dumb motherfuckers who be out there calling y'all self Moorish Americans, this is why when y'all ass go to court and y'all be like, I'm Moorish American, that shit don't be working. That shit don't be working, G. That shit do not be working, G. That shit don't be working, G. <coughs> All right, comments back on. But look, right? This is why motherfuckers that be talking that I'm Moorish American shit, <coughs> you wonder why they be laughing at your goofy ass. You know what I mean? I was locked up. You know how I many niggas tried to go in court and go per se and use them I'm Moorish American so y'all rules don't apply to me? Get that goofy ass found guilty. You sound crazy, man. You go in them people courtroom talking about I'm a Moor. You don't even know what a moor is. They've been eradicated and destroyed, nigga. You feel me? And then, see, a lot of people, they, they read noble Drew Ali. So this guy motherfuckers feeling like they moors. Nigga, you an Anunnaki god. You ain't no motherfucking moor unless you want to be a house negro. The moors was the original house negroes, nigga, that helped fucking these Pleiadians and human beings conquer us, nigga. And the moors were black, nigga. The fuck is you talking about? <coughs> facts. Supreme facts. And then right after they helped fucking Europe conquer us, Europe used their ass to build up Europe and France and Italy and the whole fucking Europe and, and, and the UK that you see today that was all built and designed by the fucking Moors, nigga. By the fucking Moors, nigga. And right after they got through, once as soon as they got through building up their shit, they slaughtered their ass. You know why they killed them? Because at the end, they steal gods, nigga, who was under a spell. So they couldn't let the Moors just keep going. Eventually, if they didn't kill them off the Moors, nigga, that spell would eventually fuck around and broke down and they would have started trying to war back. And when they started killing off the Moors, that's exactly what happened. The spell, when they start, as soon as they started killing the Moors, the spell broke. See, they started killing the Moors because they feared that the spell was going to break, even though it wasn't going to break. But, you know, the, the, the people that put the spell on the Moors, they don't really know what they're doing. They know what they're doing to an extent. So, them sensing that the spell was breaking down, well, let's just start killing their ass off before the spell break. And as soon as they killed the first Moor, who was still a god, the fucking spell broke. Back. And that's why the Moor start fighting back. And that's why it's called the Reconquista, nigga. When the Moors went to war with Europe, nigga. Right. 
Niggas don't even write. Shout out to S. Lee. Niggas try to jump in this university with me, y'all, like I ain't divine insight. I'm sitting here just to remind my people who they is. That's all I'm doing. They try to di dispute, right? Supreme facts. Niggas just talking out the side of their neck. Now, let's talk about this Atlant Anunnaki African Sumerian text shit. First off, nigga, the fucking... You have two types of Anunnaki, right? You got the Atlantean Anunnaki, which is all of us. And then you got the Sumerian Anunnakis, which were what the Africans created. Okay, the Africans are who? Us. But the Africans created the Sumerian text after they were, after we fell in frequency. So basically the Africans who made up this lie about the Sumerian Anunnaki were basically under spells and they were, put, they were just telling false stories about the real Anunnaki to hide the truth of who the Anunnakis really are. All the way down to the point where it's like, if you look it up, <coughs> it's going to say Anunnaki going to relate back to Sumerian, any Sumerian tablets or Sumerian texts. <coughs> You're going to see that's where the credit going to go to when you started talking about Anunnakis or Anunnaki. I told you somebody on Instagram got into my post and was like, hey, man, you know what I'm saying? Why are you lying to people? We the Titans, the fucking uh, Anunnaki are, the, are, the, are, the, are what the Africans created. Well, he true about them Africans creating that in a textbook. But no, because he said the Titans, because he thought we was Titans. Listen, we are, the name of your species is Anunnaki God. If you, have, if you are black or Latino, you are Anunnaki God. The, the, why is it called Anunnaki? Because this is planet Kai. And we are the Anunnaki. We've been Anunnaki, so that's why we named it planet Kai. The fuck? We didn't name it planet Moore, nigga. We didn't name it Planet Titan, motherfucker. Nigga, we, was, we the Titans. No, we not, nigga. You need to go within more. Nigga, the Titans are the 72 powerful ancestral spirits and energies that are locked deep within your genetics, you goofy, smoothy. The Titans are the ones that they trying to seal the fuck up, which is why they got motherfuckers taking the little vaccines and shit. Learn something, man. Instead of trying to get in here and help the CIA discredit this truth. Nigga, the people waking up regardless, man. We rising, nigga. Everybody see through all that fake shit, nigga. We ain't got a lot, nigga. Fuck the Moors, nigga. They ass sold us out, nigga. Spell or not, he's they shouldn't have got they shouldn't have got all close to the motherfucking white human beings when they was working with them. That's how the fuck she was able to get their ass to drink the shit, cause the Moors was having sex with the fucking female human beings, and they wasn't supposed to do that shit, nigga. We sent them in there to fucking help them, niggas in there fucking on them. Niggas in there fucking on them. Niggas catching feelings. Now niggas pillow talking to them and shit. Like, 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 now some real shit. The Moors was fucking the, the, the white females, nigga. We sent them to help them. Soon as they helped them at first, but soon as the white women started looking good, because they, they started looking good because the hair started leaving, the tail was gone, they started looking more in the image of our goddesses. So now you got these Moors in there. Now Cindy's looking a little more... She's looking a little more, you know, today than she did last last week. You know what I'm saying? And niggas in there fucking them on the low. That's why Cindy was able to get up under a motherfucker with the, y'all should let me make y'all something to eat. Fuck out of here, old Delilah ass hoe. Like I said, nigga, if the Morse wasn't in there, if the niggas went up in there and did what the fuck they supposed to do, instead of catching feelings for the pussy, nigga, we wouldn't be where we at today, nigga. What did you talk about? Niggas went in there. If niggas wasn't fucking them, niggas wouldn't have been pillow talking. Now niggas want to catch feelings for these hoes. These white bitches that was against us. And now you giving this whole access codes to our ancient technology. Now this bitch then took the codes, took the drop back to them. And they just took over the whole planet. That just like today. Home. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Fucked up. Hell no. That one about the juiciest shit too. This is why the original saying come from a man. I'm be pillow talking. That came from, we watched what the fucking Moors did, nigga. Nigga fell in love. Niggas fell in love. Now all of a sudden, niggas want to give up access codes? Nigga, they didn't get an access codes to no, to no white male. They didn't get an access codes to John. It was a white woman who they gave access codes to, who, who took it back to the Pleiadians. Nigga, fuck out of here, nigga. 
So I'll never settle down with nothing like them. Because I already know what it is. Y'all been snaking us all through history. These motherfuckers don't know the deepness of this snake shit with these white racist women. Like, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? For real. Like, it's some beautiful white women. I'm not racist. And if you're a beautiful white woman, I can acknowledge your beauty. <coughs> right? Because, hold on. I'm not going to say and act like it's not no beautiful white woman. I be seeing white women thick as fuck nowadays. Tats, beautiful as fuck. Because they were made in the image of our supreme goddesses, these black and Latino women. So, of course, they're going to be beautiful to some extent. So, I'm not never putting the white race down. I'm just saying we don't supposed to mix our seed with y'all. Because not once, but twice, when we tried doing it, the whole fucking species suffered, nigga. Well, really, no once. Because when they telling you about motherfuckers coming down and having sex with the human beings, they really talking about the Moors having sex with the fucking human beings. You know what I'm saying? And the gods came down and took them as wives. They was talking about the fucking morals who are gods taking these fucking human beings as they wives, nigga. I'm being honest. I'm just connecting the dots. Feel me? Now. So. These bitches good. We're back right here. Hitting on a whole nother level. Let me save them for later. I only got three left, four left in this month. No one ever wants some more when I get off here with y'all, but let me calm down if I eat them all on some. So. That was the first lecture, y'all, about Independence Day. Now you know what Independence Day is. That on this day, we was defeated by these fucking human beings and Pleiadians. And that's why they celebrate it. That's why it's called Independence Day. It has nothing to do with fucking Great Britain going to war with the 13 colonies. Because America is fucking Britain. The 13 colonies was fucking who? They were racist white motherfuckers, nigga. Fuck them titles, nigga. So you really believe that Great Britain went to war with their motherfucking self? Nigga, miss me with that whole story in the history books about the British are coming. The British are coming. Man, get y'all goofy ass out of here, man. The British are coming. And why you think they want us to pop fireworks on the 4th of July? In order for a firework to explode, what, what's the main chemical in it? Black powder, which is what? Carbon. And what are we? Carbon. Every fucking firecracker, nigga, they got, they actually got weapons and projectiles like that. And they were used on that day to hurt us. They blew us up with all type of projectiles. That's why on the 4th of July, they like to celebrate by letting off fireworks. So they was letting off fireworks at our ass, nigga. Nigga, this should get deep. Boy, they was letting them bitches off at our ass, nigga. So they always celebrate by letting them bitches off. That's why they celebrate. You know, black people, Latino people, we didn't know this. So we just celebrate every year with our family shit. And then to make it worse, then they want to turn around and make feed us motherfucking pork and shit on that day. Knowing that some other shit is bad for us. Now they got us barbecuing. We letting off missiles and shit. Happy 4th, y'all not even knowing what this shit about. <clears throat> Nigga, these people slaughtered our ancestors on this day, boy. This one they got this bitch from us all the way. Back. <coughs> now, <coughs> now, <coughs> boy, when y'all see me tomorrow, well, y'all ain't gonna see me tomorrow. Y'all see me Tuesday, boy, I'm going to be so motherfucking healthy. Y'all be like, damn, God, I got over there. Yeah, because I ain't got to get out here and meditate today. Drunk that lemon juice, all that shit coming out. I feel a whole lot better already. Like, my head was hurt when I first got on here. What y'all like? My shit was hurting, nigga. I shit like... I'm like, man, let me go ahead. I got to talk to my people, though, nigga. I don't, I don't feel... I don't have... A, I don't feel pain. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm mental. I'm mentalist. So I move around that. I know the avatar is prone to going through different ailments because we in this third density. So I can't go around the laws of physics. I can bend them, however, but you can't break them. You got to work within them. You know what I'm saying? All right. So 
That was the first lecture. And I told Bay, look, Bay, Bay got mad at me early, y'all. She came out, said I was mad. Matter of fact, I was meditating early. I forget. I bet it's only for like six minutes, literally. That's why. I, that's why I feel like I didn't meditate because I only meditated for like six minutes. And she, she, she was. She came outside, and she tried to give me a kiss. And I was like, Nah, Bay, I'm, I can't give you no kiss. I got a little whop the woo to get over real quick. I know if I kiss you, she your ass go. Now you around here with the cheese. Boy, Bay asked them there gave my ass a left hook. She wasn't trying to hear nothing. I'm like, no, nah, babe, it ain't even like that. Because she couldn't tell. You know, like, y'all couldn't really tell. If I wasn't coughing, I could still flip, jump, run. Like, it's nothing like like holding me back. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker wouldn't tell. You know what I'm saying? If I'm not coughing this and that. But, you know, so look, that was the first, that was the first, like, yeah, she was, she damn near left hooked my ass, y'all. She thought I was acting funny, nigga. She, oh, you acting funny today, nigga? I can't get no limps. I can't get no juicy lips today. You better give me them big juicy lips, boy. Boy, you better give me them big juicy lips. That's what she said. I'm like, damn, babe, you got to have some sympathy for me, man. I can't lay that thing down tonight. I'm going to have to roll back. And kicks it, chill. You feel me? I'm chilling. You're going to have to fall back. You be all right for a couple days. I got to I gotta maintain my energy. You feel me? I'm trying to come and siphon my energy you know what I'm saying? You know I'm, I'm, I'm recovering right now. You got to is that a sight for my energy, man. You know I love you. I'm only talking shit like this because she's upstairs cleaning with the, with my daughters. And I know she's not watching it live. And she's not going to go back and watch it. So I can talk like this. I'm going to just talk it up. I'm gonna, we're going to use our inside voices here, people, when we talk like this. You know, the wife. Happy wife, happy life, y'all. We gotta use our, we gotta use our inside voices. We gotta use our inside voices here, people. You feel me? Hey, Tommy, he said do a live sober. Nigga, I'll never, I'll never be sober because I'm always high. I'm always on the high vibration. Why I wanna be sober for? Why I wanna vibe low for? I don't wanna vibe low. If you wanna, if you wanna motherfucking go to somebody that's sober live, Go to they shit. Nigga, we get high in here, nigga. Feel me? You want you wanna hit this? I will get your bitch ass out. Go to somebody else live, nigga. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and then he talking about sober. You bring me to this is the intermission, y'all, cause that was part that was this a double lecture bonus today. That was 4th of July. We finna roll into the Larry Hoover lecture now. You see what I'm saying? So this the intermission. We can talk a little shit and smoke a little bit before we roll into Larry shit. And if we got a part two that we will. You know what we doing over here. And I got their ass good, didn't I? If I would have just attacked the 4th of July, y'all, they probably would have played play with the video. But I just mentioned Larry, so they didn't see that first lecture coming, y'all. That's how I'm about to start doing their ass, nigga. Put up. You feel me? I should make a lecture to say everybody should take the, take the uh, everybody need to go get the vaccine. That's going to be the title of my next lecture, y'all. It's going to say everybody need to go get vaccinated, for real. That's going to be the title. That's going to be the title. Nigga, we gotta get we gotta get slick here, y'all. You hear me, y'all? We gotta get slick here. You feel me? I just don't be trying to lie to the people, y'all. That's the old me. I used to lie a lot. That's the old me, y'all. So you know, I don't be trying to lie to y'all. You feel me? But it ain't really lying to y'all. I might have to lie to them. So don't take it personally like I'm lying to y'all. Don't let this affect me and you. You watching me reflection? I'm not focused on the 989. I'm focusing on you at home. Who's watching me right now? I'm just talking to you. You being here all the time. Don't feel like I'm lying to you. Don't take it personal. You know what I'm saying? Just know sometimes we got to do what we got to do. <clears throat> you feel me? All right. Now, I want to say something real quick because he mentioned do a live sober. <clears throat> that brings me into my next mini lecture. I'm going to make this a mini lecture. So now this is three lectures, y'all. I like this right here. I like this. And if you a blogger, please clip these three different lectures up for me. Title it. Rashad Jamal talks about 4th of July. Then title another one. Rashad Jamal talks about Shikari Richardson. Then title the next one. Rashad Jamal talks about political prisoners. You feel me? I'm going to let y'all do the titling. Don't follow my titles no more, y'all. I might say, God damn it. The next lecture is about motherfucking Cindy Who takes on Whoville. While the Grinch is watching. You know what I'm saying? That don't mean that's what we're going to talk about. You feel me? Niggas going to get on here like, Joe. Why God say he got a lecture coming up on Cindy Who in Whoville? 
Like, I've been fucking with God for a minute, you know, and I can hang with him through, I done hung with him tough through tough situations. I done been with him through his ups and his downs now, but I'm going to have to inbox, email him something. We going to, why does the lecture says we're live in seven days? Cindy who takes on Whoville? What is reflection on? But when you come into the lecture, boy, it's going to be about something totally, completely different. You hear me? Real, y'all. We got to get creative, y'all. And then I'll just title it whatever and then tell y'all what the lecture about at the beginning. Or I'll put my motherfucking thumbnail on my motherfucking iPad. <coughs> and just pull the camera and show y'all up. This is the lesson about today. Don't worry about that title. So, yeah, let me talk about Shikari Richardson real quick, too, y'all. Real quick, real quick. Because he, he said do a live sober. So, that, that lead me to my next thing I wanted to say. All right. So... Shakari Richardson, as we all know, was banned from running in her hundred meter final because she got she got caught getting high. <coughs> That's what they say. All right. Um, me personally, I fuck with her. I fuck with what she had, what she was trying to do. Yeah, now look, right? Damn, I All right, so check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out, y'all. So let's talk about Shikari Richardson. So what I wanted to highlight with Shikari Richardson real quick was this. Did anybody notice? Like, I don't know if did y'all notice, like, honestly, did y'all notice how they said that they banned her because it was a performance enhancing drug? That's what I want to know. Did y'all see that? Did y'all see that? Did y'all? I mean, I know everybody focused on everything else. She got suspended for weed, whatever. You know. I'm, I'm going to explain that in a second. But did you notice that they said that weed... It's considered. Hmm. Hmm. My brush go. Did y'all notice that though? Uh. 
I'm gonna be honest with you. It ain't she ain't about no weed. I ass. I ain't getting high. I'm gonna tell y'all what it's about. Let's see. Trying to just put an article up, y'all. Okay, here we go, y'all. I want y'all to use y'all own intellect, y'all. Let's read right here. It says, hold on, y'all. Let's break this down, man. Let's break this down with my little wooden, with my uh, petrified wood right here. A little back scratcher. So look. Well, well, it's complicated. USADA's page on marijuana explains that the drug is banned by the World Anti-Doping Association, whose rules USADA must follow because it meets their criteria. A, it possesses a health risk to athletes. I could see them saying that. B, it has to put now. This way, this way they try to lose you at. Pay attention, y'all. They're not calling it a performance enhancing drug. That's not the way they wording it, but that's what they saying. They're not wording it like that, but that's what they're saying. Check it out. B, it has the potential to enhance performance. And C, it violates the spirit of sport. C and B is the same shit. <clears throat> All right? C and B is the same shit. Because think about it like, what you mean it violates the spirit of the sport? The only reason you saying it violates the spirit of the sport is if you believe it's something that's going to be performance enhancing. Like if a motherfucker took steroids. All right? So, they're letting you know right there that marijuana is a performance enhancing drug, y'all. Now, I want to zero in on that for a reason. Because many of you, I did a lecture on my website about cannabis and where it comes from. You got to go on my website to see it, www.uci.online. You hear me? Got to be a member to see it, but it's on there, though. And, or you could just rent it. You could pay like $9.99 and rent it. But I got a video where I touched on cannabis. I talked about what, what's, what planet it come from. Uh, I've touched lightly on it publicly, but I went into more depth detail on my website. And if you ever seen that lecture... It further let you know that what I taught y'all about cannabis was true in marijuana. This is true. All right. When I when I told y'all where marijuana come from and what its reason is for, it's true. Now, 
if she's high and she's running, yeah, she will have a more enhanced performance than others who not high. As an ex athlete, I could tell you we used to go play basketball high all the time, and boy, you be you be hooping. Cause see, <coughs> marijuana work like cannabis work like this. All right, cannabis work like this, and this is why they made it illegal. This is why it's illegal. It's only illegal because of it has the potential to unlock the DEA within us as well, and it definitely helps to to open up the pineals of the poor white people, which would then side with us. So. Weed is literally only made illegal because the shit actually helps you. You know what I'm saying? We make you focus more on what you're doing, honestly. Like, if you smoke a blunt and you just sitting there and you ain't doing shit, you're going to zone out. But anybody that smoke weed to tell you, if you smoke a blunt and then you you go focus, you go do some shit, you're going to be more focused on whatever you're doing. It's going to be more, it's gonna be more intense. Well, that's why when people, do, people, you can talk to any street nigga. He ain't no intellect. He ain't kicking no history. Man, let that nigga hit the weed. He gonna be, sound like the smartest person he's ever been in his life. Because weed really is a plant that taps you into quantum physics, the quantum physics of you, the quantum realms of you, the astral planes. Facts. Now that's why they. That's why it's considered performance enhancing, nigga. That ain't steroids. She ain't take no steroids. All right? So I want to highlight that weed real quick with her. But I also want to highlight this. This is what happened with Shikari Richardson so everybody can know. Did she ever smoke weed? No, nigga. She ain't smoke no motherfucking weed. I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. Because listen, she is naturally fast. She has tapped into her DEA. All right? So by her being able to tap into her DEA, she only five feet. So five feet, five one. So anybody that sprinter tell you that the low, the longer your legs is, the more ground you cover. So in track, they normally like the sprinter's bodies are normally tall and lean. Even on the female side, she's short to be a sprinter. <laughs> if you ever watched her run, they always mention that. She's only five feet. She's going against all odds and be smoking their ass. She got running motherfuckers 5'10", 5'11". So you know how, how strong her legs got to be to outrun somebody taller than her? Because her legs got to move more to, because the long legs going to cover a lot of ground. One, it's, Shikari Richardson got to take six strides. That's pro, the, Her six strides is two strides for another sprinter. Her four to six strides is two strides to another sprinter that's tall. So she was fucking the sport up. You feel me? Um, you know, changing, changing, changing. Listen, it's just like my lecture I did on Mark Henry. The elites always go out their way to try to hide DEA. Anytime somebody taps into it, they hide it. Like if an athlete tap into it and they can't control the athlete, they hide it. They made Mark Henry quit. Fuck. They made Mark Henry fucking retire from weight weightlifting at 22, 23 years old. It made his ass go wrestle just because he was going to wake up the world to, to how the fuck this nigga picking up a thousand pounds? How you squatting? <coughs> you feel me? That ain't no normal shit, nigga. Yeah, so that way y'all ain't got to see me when I spin my little bottle and shit. But yeah, though, you know, that ain't normal. You could, you could do that with me. Look, instead of the elites telling you like Rashad Jamal has tapped into his DEA. So he's able to see people auras. He's able to access other galaxies and realms of existence while still being here in the flesh because he's tapped into his DEA. To the point where if he don't know how to do something, he's going to learn. You see what I'm saying? Like quicker than the average person would is not tapped into their DEA. The CIA, the FBI, the government, mainstream America, mainstream media will never say Rashad Jamal is a fucking genius, which I am. They wouldn't give me that. Because they can't control me. I, they have no 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 hand around my neck. But if I was, if I had, I was like, if I was a nigga they could dangle by the string, boy, I, the whole world would be renowned in me for my for what I teach and bring. See what I'm saying? They do that with y'all. They rather y'all go work and they for their businesses than working and then use your DEA, your deoxyetheric acid, which is what you came here to do. 
So to hide the DA, you know what they did? Because she's not with the... She Look, when she running like that in college, she ain't got to sit down with them elites yet. She was just in college. But when she trying to go to the Olympics, that's like trying to sign a record deal. If you an athlete, you try to go to the Olympics, you got to check in with them people. We don't give, they don't give a fuck about your talent. <clears throat> you got to go check in with them people, man. Period. It ain't about your talent. Okay? So... She from Dallas. She come out of Dallas. You can tell she got some hood in her. But you can also tell she stand for something. She got pictures doing this. Shout out to Dallas. That's my third home. She got pictures doing this. And you don't see a lot of young guys her age doing this. Pay attention to what. So she already is aware she got, she got something she stand for. They looking at her like, and... They the poster girl of the Olympics is Shelly Frazier and Price from Jamaica. She already sold her so. So you and she gonna she would have smoked her. She would have smoked her in the Olympics. Shakari Richardson would have smoked Shelly Ann Frazier Price from Jamaica. Feel me? They not gonna let that happen because Shelly Ann Frazier Price, although she's Jamaican, she sold her soul though. Ain't no chill out, bro. Nigga, you chill out. Get your bitch ass out of my university, nigga. Fuck you, man, because I'm telling you a motherfucker from your country, so they sold. You talking about chill out, nigga. I ain't just say fuck Jamaica, nigga. I said a motherfucker from Jamaica sold out, nigga. Just like his motherfuckers in America that sold out, nigga. If you was on live right now saying, man, Joe, it's a nigga in America sold out, nigga. I'm not going to throw no motherfucking American flag up and say chill out, bro. Nigga, I'm saying real shit. Shelly and Frazier Price sold her soul, nigga. And Shikari Richardson haven't done it yet. So to, so to prevent her from outrunning they poster girl, nigga, they motherfucking told her ass you can't race. And they created a, a narrative to let motherfuckers know her ass got high so we, we ain't gonna let her ass run. Whole time her ass ain't getting high. Shorty ass focused on track. Where the fuck you think she at getting high? And she's scared though. She's a goddess who's scared. Ain't nobody gonna speak up for her. So she's just running with the shit like, okay, well, what y'all want me to do? Because I really want to run. She just lost her mom and a... she want to run. And that's how they get us. It's like rappers want to get rich. That's how they get us all the time. And I was hoping she didn't sell her soul. But I already know Shakari Richardson is going to sell her soul because they already came up with an article saying that she won't be able to run in the 100, but she will be able to run in the relay. The fact they're letting you run, period, let me know you went on ahead and converted because your ass want to run. And that's how we lose a lot of our, our beautiful souls like that, y'all. Every time. With that allure of fame and that allure of national attention. Look, Shakari Richardson, I don't know if you watch my videos. I don't know if nobody in your family do. But I hope somebody that know you watch my shit. A lot of people watch me. I hope somebody that this channel has millions of views. I hope somebody that know you watch, watch my shit and you can see this little part of the election, man. Like, you don't need no Olympics to, to, to validate you, shorty. You a goddess. You naturally gifted. They don't want to let you shine. Fuck them. Do like I did. Fuck them. Just shit. Just stay running regular races then. You ain't got to go to the Olympics. Smoke everything in the regular races. And then speak out against it. Go live. You got a platform. Look, y'all. Real talk. Motherfuckers get down on me, Joe. Fuck all that. Take it. Take it. You know what I'm saying? Well, let me take Let me take um responsibility and apologize You know for getting high. I like the fact you did that. That was still real. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time... I already know that it's certain individuals, you like, you know how like a soul can know what they supposed to do, but if they don't have the right people around them, they can get, you know what I'm saying? And that's what she kind of got going. So I hope that you know, man, you don't need the Olympics to validate you. And like, so I tell you artists that like, stop thinking y'all need label to validate y'all, billboard. Nigga, just put your music out, man. Do it for you and your people, man. And that's what it is. Like, you don't gotta, you feel me, do that. And you also ain't gotta like use all your music to just try to, Tear the frequency down. Like, yeah, I know niggas dying in your hood. Rap about niggas dying in your hood. Shit, I, rap, I, will, I will put that in my music too because it's something I've experienced. And you got to tell a story. But every song shouldn't be about that. And it's a difference between talking about something you went through and trying to glorify it. Them two different things. Them two different things. You know what I'm saying? So that's all I got to say about the Chicago Richardson shit. We finna move into the main event. The Larry Hoover story. Growth and development. Happy 7th day to all the guys that is in the university. You know what I'm saying? And and, ha and, and happy 7th full day to everybody with carbon in their skin. Because today, <clears throat> I'm going to tell y'all what Larry Hoover stood for. Me being an actual outstanding member of the organization. Feel me? And I got, that was given to me when I was in jail. Now, now technically, I could retire because, you know, at 35, you could retire. 
I'm 34 in their in they, in they time frame. Even though I'm not 34, I'm, I'm a timeless being. I'm just giving y'all a circumference of, you know what I'm saying? Like, me being a part of the organization, I was one of the people in the organization that I know niggas didn't know literature. Niggas never knew they lit. And I got ranked, I got so much position in the organization because I knew the literature. I knew about Larry Hoover's blueprint and what he stood for and what he was about. And I actually got out of jail and I embody that right now every day. I'm not out here killing nobody. I'm not out here selling drugs. I'm not out here tearing the community down. I'm actually out here building our community up every single day. Anybody I talk about, these are I talk about the people that's tearing our communities down, that's tearing the planet down with the frequency. You feel me? Like a lot of individuals, like I say, you know, a lot of people don't even know that he's a political prisoner, man. Larry, Larry Hoover is a political prisoner, you know what I'm saying? All right, and a lot of us have forgotten about political prisoners. So, so what is a political prisoner? All right, what's a political prisoner? A political prisoner is somebody that is locked up because they are against the government. They are against the system, and they have a lot of power. They have a lot of people behind them. So, the government then, um, like to call these people subversive. Subversive just means you against the system. So, you know, once they deem you subversive. Once they deem you subversive, once they deem you subversive, um, what? I'm looking for mom, but Zoe told me that mom said that I'm gonna She in the room. Oh. Did you go in the room? Yeah. You couldn't have went in the room. Fuck, she ain't gonna do it. She jumped out the window. Fuck out of here. Kids crazy. Now, you ain't trying to look for mom. I told them they couldn't go outside today so they finished cleaning, cleaning upstairs. Bro, what you just did, that's my daughter Lele. What you just did was came downstairs and trying to see if you could peek outside with your, see what your little friend's doing. You knew I was down here, but you knew I was teaching, so you thought I wasn't going to be paying attention. That's what she just did. You didn't know what you doing down here. I know y'all ain't finished cleaning up up there. I don't even smell no, no, no fragrance in the area, so y'all can't be. You feel me? Uh, 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 I'm looking for mom. How you looking for mom? Mom upstairs in the room. You just came from that upstairs. So why wouldn't you come out your room and go knock on mom's door? See what I'm saying? You came right down the stairs. You're not looking for mom because where did mom go when she jumped out the window? You know what I'm saying? You're trying to outslick me, man. Like, I, I feel me like, come on, man. Man, go finish. <coughs> go finish doing what you was asked to do. You feel me? I let them do whatever they want to do, but then when it's time to clean, they always try to be slick. You know what I'm saying? I spoil them. Spoil her, like, give her whatever she wants. She don't want nothing. I'm trying to sneak out. Oh, he, on, he teaching. He ain't going to be paying attention. He be into it. He be... She thinks she know. Me. I know Pops. He be into it. He ain't going to know. I'm on your ass. I'm multitasking here. I got to be a father to you, and I got to be a father to my planet. You know what I'm saying? I'm, multi I'm multitasking here, nigga. All right, so... We back talking about Larry Hoover, man. Okay. So, um, even when I titled like the lecture, like just keeping it real, I, I kind of double thought about it. I'm like, damn, do I even want to make a lecture about him? Cause like, I don't want people to think like I'm being biased or like I'm trying to just glorify gang life or something because he's looked at as a gang leader by mainstream America <coughs> because this is how he has been painted in the media. And the 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 elites want him to be looked at as like that. He's not the only political prisoner. Jeff Ford is many more of them, all right? But these political prisoners, these are people that stuff had a real something they actually stood for, all right? To understand Larry Hoover, you got to understand, understand the whole Larry Hoover, you know, you know, uh, story. All I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is, we gonna look at this real quick. We gonna take because look, we I'm gonna show y'all what they said about him on Wikipedia, which is nothing, nothing really. You know what I'm saying? He just painted as a criminal on here. You feel me? So I just want y'all to see that real quick. Then I'm gonna move the fucking tablet, nigga. I come from this shit for real. I don't need no tablet, nigga, to speak about what's really going on when it come to this. When it come to this, when it come to this right here, you better know for real. So look, right. Let's see what they saying about Larry Hoover. Free the old man, political prisoner, man. All right. He was born November 30th, 1950, Jackson, Mississippi. He's 70 years old. He's been locked up his whole life. 
a fact. Lele. Hold on. Hey, Lele. Yeah, Larry a God. We they gonna find out today though. Hey. Go to that window right there and let them know you still cleaning. You ain't gotta. Nah, y'all good. Y'all good. Go back up. Y'all good. Go back upstairs. They went back on the other side. Y'all good. They was knocking on the door. <coughs> All right. So. So he age thirty. All right. He from Jackson, Mississippi. A lot of people think he's from Chicago because Chicago is the headquarters of the GDs, which is the group he's responsible for. But he's not from Chicago. All right. And all real members know that as well. But Larry Hoover was born in Jackson, Mississippi. Shout out to Mississippi. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the guys in Mississippi, too. Shout out to the guys everywhere, though. But. These some his nicknames: King Larry, Children, Larry Bernard, Larry Hoover Jr., Tyree Hoover. All right, criminal status: in prison at ADX Florence, in Florence, Colorado. So let's click on this real quick so y'all can see where he at. All right, United States Penitentiary Administrative Maximum Facility. This is Florence, this is ADX. Okay, so ADX is where they send. All of the harshest cri criminals, you know what I'm saying? Like, all of your most famous, like, Marilyn Manson, you know what I'm saying? Some of the most famous people you could think of that, that have committed crimes <coughs> are, in, are in ADX. Like, let me tell you something. I've been through the feds before when I was on federal extradition, right? I went through the feds. And you got levels in the feds, you know what I'm saying? You got camps. People that's in camps, that's like the lowest level. They ask, like, do they know what they want to do? They on their way home. But you got max, people in the Fed with max. You know, them Fed penitentiaries, they be serious. All right? All right? Now, like Big Muddy. Oh, no, that ain't Big Muddy. That's Big Bloody. What's that? Bloody bloody something they call it. It's a federal prison. Motherfuckers stay down in there. They call it Bloody something. Big Muddy is the actual penitentiary in, in Illinois. But basically, like, some of the most... Famous criminals you could think of is in ADX, all right? ADX, you know what I'm saying? This is where they send the terrorists. Like, like if the government was to try to come and lock me up, you know it would be federal, you know what I'm saying? Cause, because they'd look at me and be like, he's subversive. He rebellious. He's, a, he's, he's, a, he's declaring his sovereignty. You see what I'm saying? But, but what I want to say to America is this. You right, I am declaring my sovereignty from you bitches. This is my land. Why can't I declare my sovereignty from y'all? Y'all didn't y'all say y'all did that with Great Britain? Why is it America that when black people and Latino people wake up and know who we is and we want to declare our sovereignty from y'all bitches and want our separation, now all of a sudden we can't do it? But in y'all American Revolution, y'all clearly said that y'all went to war with Great Britain for y'all independence because y'all wanted to be thirteen sovereign states. It's funny how y'all be contradicting y'all self. If y'all gained y'all sovereignty from Britain, what, what's wrong? Why y'all can't understand our, our struggle? You see what I'm saying, y'all? That's why it's imperative to read history. That's why I showed y'all that early in the election. Feel me? Like, read history. These bitches are sitting here and trying to, oh, y'all trying to be sovereign citizens and y'all trying to be, you goddamn right we is. Didn't y'all do that? Y'all did the same shit, even though we know that war was really us now. We know who they was really fighting, but in y'all history books, y'all said y'all was fighting Britain. All right? So, ADX, however, is where they send motherfuckers they consider terrorists. A terrorist is anybody they consider a threat to the country. Larry Hoover is considered a terrorist. So that's why he's a political prisoner. Anybody that's fighting for right, like Tupac there, Matolo Shakur, who fought in the black, like a lot of the people that was in them Black Panther parties that didn't get killed, they ass still locked up. Y'all, did y'all know that? A lot of y'all don't even know that. Did y'all know <coughs> that a lot of those people that was fighting the wars in the 60s and them, 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 our, of, our, of our people that was fighting in the 50s, 60s, they was a part of all them groups, Black Panthers and these different groups, militia groups that was fighting against the oppressors. If they didn't kill them, guess where they at right now? 
in jail, nigga. They locked up right now. Matolo Shakur is still locked up right now as a political prisoner. Asada Shakur, who's overseas in Cuba, is still deemed a political prisoner and is still number one to this day on the FBI's most wanted list. Facts, like, that's why I always call the FBI and the CIA out. Like, man, I already know what it is. I'm waking my people up so y'all gonna automatically feel like I'm a terrorist. So, fuck it. It is what it is with me. You see what I'm saying? Just know when y'all come, how I'm coming. It ain't gonna go like it went last time. Last time I came out with my hands up when y'all raided my shit. It ain't gonna go like that this time. That was when I believed that y'all was following the law. But when I found out that you bitches, the same motherfuckers who, who y'all got running down on us with guns, the motherfuckers raping our kids and all that shit, y'all ain't got nothing coming from me but motherfucking death and destruction, boy. Y'all ain't got nothing coming from me but death and destruction, boy. I, I never honor a law, nigga. Fuck I look like, nigga. Real life, that type of energy with me. For real. But yeah, though, look, so ADX, right? This is what they want to send me to. This is what they want to send me, y'all. Like anybody that's fighting for is right. So ADX is where they send out they, they terrorists. And this is the worst. This is where you don't want to be. That's how they sales look. Three by five. You know what I'm saying? We was in six by nines in jail. They in three by fives. <coughs> you hear me, y'all? Look at they sell, bro. And they ass under the ground. <coughs> Look at they sell. They sitting here all day. Solitary confinement. This is where Larry Hoover at. This is how the cell look, y'all. Then he got two gates inside his cell in front of the door. Y'all see that? This is how he been living for the last 40 some years. Larry Hoover. All because he had a vision, y'all. So now that y'all know where he at, all right? And how they been mistreating him, too. They been getting down on him, though. Yeah, they been getting down on him dirty, though. Look what he convicted for. Murder, conspiracy, extortion, and continuing to engage in a criminal enterprise. Now, what's the criminal enterprise that they talking about he been engaging in? They talking about <coughs> the gangster disciples. All right? So let's read real quick about Larry Hoover. As y'all can see, this is what they saying about him. This is how long his Wikipedia is. It ain't even that long. Y'all see it? They got the narrative painted about this black guy, what they want to be painted about him. Check him out. He's 70. They still won't let him out. That's how scared they is of him because they know where his mind is at. You know what I'm saying? They don't fear him. They fear his mind. You feel me? Facts. All right? So check it out. Larry Hoover, born November 30th, 1950. Look how they label him, y'all. Look how they trying to tarnish his legacy. He died. That's his legacy that they didn't put on here. He's an American gang leader. First off... The Gangster Disciples is the only fucking organization that gets attacked like this, y'all. Y'all think I'm lying, don't y'all? Recently, they've been starting to do the Bloods. But let me tell y'all some real shit. Do you know that it was just like a bunch of GDs in Atlanta not too long ago? Maybe back in like 2017, 2018. They were indicted. And they didn't even really do shit major. Like, they raided all the GDs in Atlanta, right? They indicted a lot of GDs in Atlanta. Big, big indictment. Feds, right? And you know when that when that when that story came out, you know what was crazy to me? I'm like, it's crazy because I could see if they was in Atlanta on some big meat shit. The GDs in Atlanta that they indicted and locked up. You know what I'm saying? Free KK. You feel me? But they wasn't. They was just doing basic street shit. And they still came down on them GDs in Atlanta. Why? Whenever you say you GD, you're a part of Larry Hoover. The elites already know Larry Hoover's vision because they, they got his blueprint. So they already thinking that just because you repping what Larry Hoover stood for, that your ass is, you know, you in Larry vision. The oppressor's not really peeping the game that most GDs are not in Larry Hoover's vision. They have no clue about the organization. All right. So they gonna live out the life they know. They gonna sell drugs. They gonna kill. They gonna do all that. They not thinking that when they say they GD and they gonna kill somebody, that the feds put that body on Larry Hoover. Honestly, Larry Hoover is literally doing six life sentences right now at ADX Florence. Majority of that is for what other motherfuckers did because 
He ain't do all that shit. He been locked up since 1973. Larry Hoover has been locked up since 1973. It's 2021, y'all. You do the math. Larry Hoover, they had social media when he was free. And he didn't do nothing when he was free that these BDs do that's rich and famous, like the Lil Durk niggas. I always got to say his name, y'all, because he the face. He said he the Chicago Jay-Z, and he is right now. So the soul, agent of darkness, and he BD. He rapid, he make it known. So I ain't, I'm not telling on the nigga. It's known he a BD. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? You know how many niggas, you know how many niggas been dying since this BDGD war like hit social media? Like the BDGD war been going on in Chicago since the 80s. <clears throat> but it really just took off when Chief Keith blew up amongst the younger generation in Chicago on the South Side. All right. <clears throat> what y'all mean to say? Y'all can't hear it? My finger ain't on no mic. Yeah, y'all trolling. You can go outside. Take that jacket off. What I tell you about that? It's it's too hot for that jacket. Go put one of them um your little shirts on or whatever you be having on and go outside and play with your friends. Okay. Take your little sister with you too. Alright. Alright, y'all good though? Alright, cool. Alright, so. So What I'm trying to point out is, like, Larry Hoover ain't do none of this shit, right? But since Chief Keith came out, right? Chief Keith came out, and he's a BD too. Chief Keith came out, and that ignited a whole, it sparked the war because the, 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 the kids started rapping. The youth started rapping about these murders they was doing. So, you know, when you, when you put this shit in the sunlight, before Chief Keith came out, like, <coughs> yeah, people died, whatever. Yeah, that always happened, but... Nobody in Chicago was saying we were smoking on dead ops. You know how long people been killing each other in Chicago, and we never was that disrespectful. We ain't never be like, man, we smoking on our on our on people we killed or people that died. That was never us. Motherfucker died, they died. Got him, it's over with. Fuck them. You you go on. But when Chief Keith came out, it was a different energy. And then you had another GD kid rapper named JoJo from Chicago that came out with a BDK song, and that. Only intensified the GDBD war. And that was 2012 we talking. So since 2012, you can officially say in a new era, the BDGD war reignited in 2012. And that's when, that's when, that also ushered in um, what's now known as the drill scene in music and in Chicago. Yeah, they be up there drilling. Like, all that came with a certain sound. Okay? But I want you to notice something. Do you know how many motherfuckers died? Y'all just don't have a clue. You don't have a clue because you're not from Chicago. If you're from Chicago, you know what's going on. Do you know how many people didn't die, like, honestly, in the streets of Chicago since the BDGD war started in 2013? Like, literally, majority of the people that, that started that wave, they ass is dead or in jail. All right? Why am I mentioning this? Because you ain't going to see Lil Durk and them niggas getting locked up and getting six life sentences and getting hit with every fucking body that got killed for what he rap on his songs, do you? Because he sold his soul. He working with them people. Y'all don't hear me though. Let me say that again. You know how much Lil Dirk, because he's the biggest BD rapper. Thank you, babe. Then bragged about killing niggas. Every song is about killing a nigga. Do you know how many niggas got killed off his music? He's in, he inspiring it, instigating shit, steady dissing niggas dead, homies. Yeah, yeah. Shit, you know GD, I know GD's person that was gonna let shit go. And then Lil Durk will make a song and now folks and them, now they gotta go slide now. Just cause he made the song and you dissing niggas and you all the way down here in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just being real. I'm just being real.
do you see? I'm making a point though. We know Dirk the Clown and all that. That ain't why I'm mentioning his name. I'm drawing a comparison here. Okay. All right. Just listen. Well, I'm, I'm making a point here. The only murder that they ever said Larry Hoover did himself, and they never even say he did it. The only murder that Larry Hoover was tied to his name was when a 19-year-old kid named Pookie got killed in Chicago. February 26, 1973. Let's look at it. Y'all might not know that. For all of y'all thinking Larry Hoover some murderer, nigga, he ain't murdered nobody. Read what they say. Biography. On the evening of February 26, 1973, William Pookie Young, a 19-year-old neighbor, neighborhood drug dealer, was abducted <coughs> and later shot, in the, shot to death in an alley near 68th in Union, in Chicago's Inglewood neighborhood. Okay? Y'all pay attention now. It gets interesting here. His killing was ordered by Hoover. So they didn't even say Larry Hoover did it. They said Larry Hoover got him killed. His killing was ordered by Hoover after his name was mentioned as one of three people accused of stealing drugs and money from the gang five days earlier. On March 16th, 1973, Hoover, along with Young's Killers, <coughs> Black Disciple member, Andrew Howard, this is why I be trying to tell people why the BDs out there killing the GDs and vice versa. <coughs> BDs and GDs ain't supposed to be at war. Once again, when y'all do that dumb shit, y'all make the organization look bad. That's the exact reason why Jeff Ford... And Larry Hoover can't get the fuck out of jail right now because you got BDs and GDs killing each other and GDs all over America robbing, stealing, killing motherfuckers, selling drugs. And they paint the narrative that since he's the leader of the organization, he the one making everybody do all this shit. When ain't not one GD member, include myself, ever talked to Larry Hoover, G. The average people that's, that's GDs now, I don't care if he was old school, your ass ain't probably never met Larry Hoover. <coughs> you got a few OGs. Hold on. You got OGs out here now that have met Larry Hoover and have been in jail with them all that. I'm not talking about them. The point I'm making is the average youth. I, I was born in 1986. I'm GD crazy. Growth and development. BGDN. That's what it is with me. Growth and development. That's what I stand for. That's GD. I ain't never met Larry Hoover. That man been in jail since 1973. I wasn't even here yet. That's the point I'm making. And even if you an OG, unless you was in jail with him or you really ran up under him, you probably never met him. And definitely if your ass 25, 21, you definitely ain't met him, heard him, and not know for a fact, you probably got certain few members that's still keeping up with him. Majority of them people ain't reaching out to Larry Hoover and keeping up with him and all that. Pro I'm, you feel me? Because if they was, they'd be trying to help get the streets together then. They really, right? They'd be trying to really push the real vision. Okay, he locked up. That'll stop other members from pushing the real vision, though. <coughs> he locked up. Most members ain't pushing the real vision of unity and growing and developing. And when you say on the boss, that means brothers are the same struggle, nigga. On the boss, niggas. What's the boss? Nigga. Feel me? What's the boss? You feel me? Because in order for me to really put Larry Hoover's story in a function, I got to go into that literature a little bit. And what he stood for. That's the only way, that's the only way you're going to find that. You're not going to find that shit on Wikipedia, nigga. Uh, on here, nigga, it clearly says Larry Hoover was locked up for ordering him and a BD supposed to get a 19-year-old kill. That's the murder that got Larry Hoover locked up. And he's supposed to get out of 95, and then they hit his ass with a RICO act. Saying that, saying that he was the reason 
All the GDs was killing motherfuckers and everything they did. They basically tied up to Larry Hoover. They had wiretaps on him when he was in jail. I mean, none of this is on Wikipedia. This is what I know because I'm a real member, nigga. You ain't going to find what that on Wikipedia. Matter of fact, let me close this now. I said what I had to say. He got six life sentences. He in ADX. I don't even want to put the laptop in front of me no more because I ain't even trying to play like that. I'm a real life member here. I don't need none of that shit in front of me to speak about the old man. Because I'm really in the vision when a lot of people that represent us is not. Niggas pose, niggas imposters. And they be in their 40s, 50s, way, been here longer than me. Facts. Niggas ain't out here talking, niggas ain't out here trying to grow and develop, niggas ain't out here pushing the vision, none of that. Motherfuckers focus on they self. You see what I'm saying? But that ain't what Larry Hoover stood for, you feel me? Like, <clears throat> in the beginning, before he even came up with GD, he was one of the original Black Peace Stones. Running with Jeff Ford, who was another political prisoner, but I'm not going to go too much into Jeff Ford because I got him coming up on another lecture of political prisoners. This lecture is strictly about Larry Hoover and growth and development. And I see some people commenting like, talk about this, talk about that. Look, with all due respect to you, stop saying dumb shit like that in my university, G. I, I decide what the lecture topic is for the day. If you feel like you don't want to join that lecture, just don't watch it. But don't come in this motherfucker and be like, hey, talk about this. I'm not talking about that right now. I'm talking about this right now. That's, that's going to be a lecture for a whole other day and time. It's a time and place for everything. Today is seven-fold day, so we didn't talk about independence. And now we're going to talk about seven-fold as in this growth and development. And a political prisoner that the world needs to know who's a political prisoner who's being treated unfairly. It hasn't been treated unfairly since 1973. Fuck is you talking about? And all these fake-ass little imposters out here claiming to throw these ranks up and they don't know what it mean. Nigga, don't throw these guns up if you out here killing your own people. Don't throw these guns up if you out here selling drugs to the people, nigga. That's still killing your people, nigga. Now, if you did it before, you're supposed to let that shit go. Because, nigga, that's number two in Larry Hoover's vision. No drugs. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that, though? Y'all wouldn't even know that, though, because most of America don't know Larry Hoover's true vision. But the feds know because they got a copy of our blueprint, nigga. We don't do no stealing, no robbing, no lying, no cheating, no rape. That shit not nah, 1 through 16, man. We got real life lessons in our literature, man. This shit is about really getting through the through life. This shit ain't got nothing to do with no game banging, man. So when niggas sit there and do and throw these guns up and break their hat off to the right and go rob motherfuckers and sell drugs and kill motherfuckers, you make it hard on Larry Hoover. And that's the reason why right now Larry Hoover is looked at as the, as a gang leader because you niggas don't know what this shit is about. I asked a nigga right now what this left fork mean. Each one of these points has a meaning. Do you know? And each one of these points on the right got a meaning, do you know? Nigga, when we stand, they got a meaning, do you know what that mean? Don't use no gang, nigga. We ain't never been no gang. We an organization that the government, COINTELPRO, coined as a gang <coughs> to tear down the unity in the community, nigga. And they did this shit in the 60s. They attacked the gangster decide, the, grow, uh, the uh, growth and development. They attacked BDs, vice lord, or leaders, Latin king leaders. Bloods, Crips, along with the Black Panther, everybody. They took all the organizations down that was fighting against the oppressors, nigga. And then when they moved all the leaders out the way, they did put drugs in the community in the late 70s and 80s. And then once the drugs came to the community, now all the people that was GD or these different members or these organizations, leaders going out the way, still needed to make money. They started selling drugs. They didn't know it was going to kill their people like that. And then the people that started doing crack didn't know it was going to have the effect they had. It was just like an end thing. That's why I be telling y'all, like, all y'all that's sipping lean right now and popping perps and zans, y'all gonna be motherfucking crackheads in, like, 15 years, G. Y'all gonna be zan heads on the corner, shaking and shit, which lean. Like, I'm just being honest. That's how it was from crackhead. Like, everybody was doing it, and niggas ain't know that it was gonna have that effect. And then, then it hit in the 90s, and niggas, and then we grew up with crackheads, so we knew not to do it. So that's, but, but see... Motherfuckers who started with the Zans, the leans, y'all gonna be Zan heads, X head. I'm telling, I'm trying to help y'all out. You see how y'all laugh at these crackheads and these bums? That's how that's gonna be yo, that's you in 10 years, nigga. If you do pills and all that shit. I'm telling you if you don't, if you don't stop. I'm just gonna be a real OG, nigga. I ain't gonna never lie to you about nothing. Alright, so when they usher drugs into the community in the 80s, with no leadership, you kill the head, the body will fall. You know what I'm saying? Alright, so they killed the head, now the body gonna fall. Now people selling drugs just for money. But once money started getting in the way, now gangs start warring with each other for the money. And that's where all your gang wars of the late 80s and 90s come from. That's when gang banging really started, nigga. Gang banging started in the 90s, nigga. 
<laughs> her niggas wasn't gang banging in the 70s and the 80s like that. Mid 80s going into the 90s, especially 90s. <clears throat> and in the mainstream America, that's what they wanted anyway. So they promoted it with movies like Colors, with movies like South Central, with, with classic movies like Boys in the Hood, Juice. All that shit was to promote the gang lifestyle culture to us, uh, to my generation, which is why the fuck I grew up fanning shit down, wilding out in Chicago. And many more like myself. Until I remember who I was. You feel me? Who the real enemy is. That's why I tell all the gangs in America, like, it's time to unite. Like, nigga, y'all ain't gangs, y'all organizations. And if you look into your organization and what it was about, it started from a positive and it stood for something. Crips, community, community resistance and progress. Blood, meaning we protecting everything. They got the same blood we got as a Nunakais. Nigga, as black people, as Latino. Come on, man. GD, what GD mean? The grow and develop. Nah, we ain't no gangster disciples, nothing, nigga. We grow and develop. That's for everybody in life, nigga. That applies to everybody. BD, ain't no black disciple, nigga. BD's better development, Lil Dirk. Why you misleading the multitude, nigga? That's why I don't like Lil Dirk, y'all, because I'm a real GD and he claimed to be a real BD, but he got all this influence and he got BDs and GDs warring. More because of the shit he on when he could easily stop that shit. When FBG Duck was trying to squash the BGD GD war in Chicago, even though he lost his brothers and homies to the shit, that was real growth and development, man. Happy trans it's the duck. That's real, man. That's why I don't fuck with Dirk and them like that. It's like, fuck oh, them whole all right, nigga. Fuck the fuck that nigga. That's why I be like that, y'all. And then he be killing people around him and all that, all that phony fake shit, that age in the darkness and keeping all the chaos going. But y'all go, y'all go look at what's going on in Chicago. You see mamas out there crying and people out there hurt behind their kids getting killed. But guess what? What keep that violence going? The music, nigga. That's why I changed my music. That's why I said we if you rap. Nigga ain't nothing wrong with rapping, but how about when you talk about ops? You can still rap about ops. You can have your guns say fuck the ops, but let the ops be the cops. That's all, I've, that's all I've been preaching. Let the ops be the cops. Nigga, you can rap BD. You can rap GD. You can be Vice Lord. You can be Stone. You can be King. You can be Crip. You can be Blood. Whatever tribe you came from out them streets, rap it. And if you ain't come out them streets, don't rap that. Be you. But I don't care if you came out the streets. I don't care if you went to college. At the end of the day, we all got the same genetics. And we got one opposition, and that's the elites. And they frontliners is the police. That's what we got to knock down. Them the frontliners, nigga. These police out here killing us, doing us dirty. Dirty, dirty, dirty. So I don't want to hear none of that. Oh, he said, get out of the Yeah, niggas, fuck the police. I feel like that. Because of what they do to us every single day. I'm not going to let y'all kill me, nigga. Y'all not going to kill me and say it's an accident. Nigga, I'm going to take y'all bitches with me, nigga. A whole lot of y'all. Ain't going to be no... Oh, well, it was an accident. I'm not even going to give y'all that type of chance to play with me like that. Why do you think I said don't even pull me over? G, it's going down. I'm a revolutionary. I come out here every day ready like I know it could be my last on the rim, nigga. I'm a revolutionary. I'm waking my people up. That's all I'm really doing. But they send me death threats all the time, government, nigga. You think they don't want to lock me up? You think they ain't going to try to come up with something down the road try to lock me? It ain't going to never work, though, nigga. I'll never go back to jail. I ain't did nothing. I'm a, I'm a sovereign being. Y'all country, y'all laws in this land on the plot of me. I'm a sovereign being. And I don't need no paperwork to validate that, nigga. I don't need America to validate that. Larry Hoover don't need y'all to validate his, him being a sovereign being. That man ain't even did nothing. Y'all said he did something. He, he didn't even get locked up on the original murder like he did it. They said that he had a motherfucker somebody else do it. But the last time I checked in Chicago, even if I did hire you to do a murder and the police find out, nigga, feel me? And we talking about, he caught this in 73 when they was giving niggas 10 years for a murder. How, why is he still in jail? It ain't like they said Larry Hoover killed 25 people himself. They ain't got one article saying Larry Hoover shot nobody. So how the fuck he end up not getting out? Then 93, 94, 95 come, you just go lock up a bunch of GDs who you know ain't really GD. Because they out here doing other shit that don't represent him and put all that on him and use it as a reason to give him six life sentences so that he can never get out. Because you fear the power of what Larry Hoover stand for, which is growth and development. Black unity. Nigga, when we say on the boss, that ain't game banging. When we say on the boss, a real member, no. Boss means brothers are the same struggle for those out there in America that don't know what Larry Hoover stood for. Let a real one tell you, nigga. When we be like on the boss, nigga, B-O-S, brothers are the same struggle, nigga. What's our struggle? For educational, economical, political, and social development. That's Larry Hoover vision. Tell his real vision. Tell his real vision. You hear me, nigga?
And don't know GD hit me up saying, oh, man, you bogus G. You was on live spitting literature, nigga. I don't gangbang. They not a GD helped me at all, nigga. The GDs turned on me because they not in the vision. When I was in jail, GD snaked me. When I was in the streets, I caught my first degree attempt murder on a GD. Nigga, so can't a GD tell me shit unless you really one of the guys and you gonna already know what, what vibe I'm on, nigga. There's no way to really present the old man, the honorable chairman, as the real God that he is and the political prison he is without speaking about his literature, the shit he wrote down and his vision. It's impossible, nigga. It's impossible, nigga. Fuck out of here. I ain't trying to hear that shit, nigga. Don't, don't hit me up like, like we got a treasure box, nigga. Like niggas throwing sessions and shit. I ain't trying to hear that shit, nigga. Because if you ask me, I'm the realest GD out here, nigga. I'm actually for our people, which was his real vision, nigga. Really growing and developing, nigga. You feel me? Really pushing that struggle for educational, economical, political, and social development, nigga. I ain't trying to hear shit. That's why when they be honor respect and niggas be all, they be niggas be acting like they GDs. They be all clicked up for views and niggas be rapping and they be looking like the real Them niggas ain't no real GDs. Them niggas ain't us. Them niggas ain't imposters. Pull them little niggas to the side. What that right fork mean? They ain't, can't, can't tell you what them five P's mean. Let me hear the owl. Let me hear the duck. Let me hear the eye pledge. Let me hear the weed. Let me hear the weed of will. Let me hear the golden rule, nigga. Come on, they can't do none of that. They can't do none of that, so I ain't honoring none of them. Fuckers you talking about. You feel me? And if you really one of the guys, then you gonna fuck with me because you see clearly through me that I'm in the vision. That's what all this is about. The vision, nigga. Fuck is you talking about? So, that false narrative that's being painted on Larry Hoover is because of his vision. This is his literature. This is our organization literature. When you go to jail, you can't even say you GD if you don't know this shit verbatim, nigga. Or familiar with something, nigga. See what I'm saying? Same thing for BDs. I ain't trying to hear that shit now. Nah, like I said, nigga, any BD got an issue because I be saying, fuck the now, I'll beat your bitch ass, boy. I don't, be, I don't be playing with none of that shit. Now I be out here every day. I just bump into a motherfucking target. He like, bro, don't you know you? I'm like, yeah, he shook my hand. It was love. It be just me. Nigga, I ain't, come on, man. I ain't, me and the ancestors, nigga. I'm going to tell facts about shit, nigga. Fact. Real life facts, man. Come on, man. If you call it in Chicago right now, y'all, it's a whole war. The majority of that violence is coming from that BDGD war. And niggas connected to it. Because in Chicago, you ain't got to be BD or GD to be a part of that war. That ain't how our city work. Remember this and shit. This is how Chicago work. I could be GD. I'm from 1100. I can get into it with y'all. Y'all from Humble Park. Y'all GDs from Humble Park. I could get a tool with my own G's from Humble Park because there's no more structure in the streets. Larry Hoover is gone. So now I can get a tool with my own GD from Humble Park. But I might have a cousin that's a fucking stone. He from out south. He finna come all the way up north and go fan Humble Park up just for me because he my cousin. He ain't got nothing to do with that war. Or you got BDs and GDs from Old Block and 63rd and all up in that area where that BDG war going on in Inglewood. You know how many niggas they connected to? They got family up like me. I'm up north. You got people up north, south. West, that ain't even in from that hood and be connected to that shit. And that shit trickle and it get, it get real hectic in Chicago. So you got that going on and then you got the mercenary groups riding around, keeping it going by killing us as well. You know what I'm saying? So that's why like when FBG Duck, who's a GD, was trying to end the BDD war, the BDGD war, he got killed immediately. Because he was too big and he was already through the door. It's a song right now. It just came out today. Shout out to Ruger called They Didn't Let the GDs in the Dope. You know why he made that song? Because anybody in Chicago will tell you they've been blackballing GDs since Larry Hoover got locked up in 1973, nigga. Me being a part of the music industry in Chicago, I can tell y'all that's my audience. A main reason why my city in Chicago didn't fuck with me, because I started rapping way back in 07, 08, I was dropping mixtapes. I got shit from 08, I was spit. Bro, you know how many DJs ain't fuck with me just because I was GD? Facts, nigga. They not going to say that. You know, nigga play it like it's cool, but low key, that's what it was. Do you know that everybody that didn't blew up from Chicago, in Chicago from the 90s on back was either a vice lord or finball? That's all it was. Vice lords, traveler, vice lords, fucking four corner hustlers, fucking and BDs now. The GD still ain't literally got through the door in Chicago. Y'all can't name one GD from Chicago that's rapping. Unless you damn near from Chicago or you keep up with that scene. I'm talking about go to the around. You could damn near go to any adult and they know who Lil Durk is. <coughs> Even if they don't listen to music, they know who Lil Durk is because his ass is through the door. He got the elites behind him. He just sold his soul. He, he international. Duck wasn't international. 
and Ruka, who just came out, he definitely an international. You know what I'm saying? So I'm saying, like, think about this, y'all. I'm, I'm a GD, and I've been rapping a long time. And I never, I never blew up in Chicago. You know who showed me love, y'all? Atlanta. When I started rapping, making music, came to Atlanta years ago, a few years ago, because I first started coming to 09 back and forth, but like 2016, 2017, after I got out, and I really just came back down here 2017, locked in, bro. In Atlanta, bro. Niggas show me love, support me, book me for shows. All that. Boy, in Chicago, I would, I would never got that. I then got to be Vice Lord or BD or a Stone or something. Let me put y'all on game. The biggest rappers is all pinballs. So let's, let's, let's just go back to the 90s, y'all. Let's go back to the 90s. So I'm painting a narrative. Y'all talking about Larry Hoover, the Larry Hoover story. That blew up in music. So you can understand this GD through the dough song. Check this out. We talking just music. Let's start with who got popping. Crucial Conflict in the 90s. Remember Crucial Conflict, y'all? Those not from Chicago. That hey, hey, in the middle of the bomb. Y'all remember them? That was in the 90s. If you're 21 and older, younger, I definitely know you ain't gonna remember them. But we got elders in here and peers, my age. So I wanna start from as far back as I can go to grab everybody. Crucial Conflict, they were vice lords. Crucial Conflict was Vice Lords, man. The Brat. She was a traveler. He fucking traveled. Vice Lords. Everybody in Chicago was affiliated to somebody. Even Kanye West. Guess who Kanye West was affiliated with, y'all? Stones. Black Peace Stones. Those are Finbos. Why you think Kanye West said, my, on his, go, go look at Kanye West's old album. Go listen. He said, My homie Marley used to stay 79th of May. One of my best friends from back in the day, down the street from Cal, you met a school full of stones. They nicknamed me K-Rock, so they'll leave me alone. Bull Jackie with his hat broke way, y'all. You know why Kanye West said, see, a lot of y'all, y'all didn't know why, like, everybody's not from Chicago. Y'all don't look at Kanye West as a game banger, but everybody's affiliated from my city. You can't be. You cannot be from Chicago and not be affiliated. You affiliated to somebody, boy. You got family members that's that's a part of that mob. And that's what you affiliated with. See what I'm saying? So when Kanye West said that line, I'm just making a point. Like Kanye West, he blew up. He's affiliated with. He was affiliated with Blackstones. Who else blew up? Lupe Fiasco. Guess what? Lupe Fiasco was affiliated with y'all. Four kind of hustlers. I don't give a fuck how. Don't let them glasses fool y'all. When Lupe Fiasco came out, he could rap his ass off. He had talent. Kick push was hard. All that. Shout out to Lupe. But guess what he was, y'all? A four-corner hustler from out west, boy. <coughs> Facts. I'm making my point. Ain't no GD ever blew up from Chicago. None of them, nigga. And it's some talented. I'm talking about... Listen, man, to be honest with you, the GDs got some of the most talented artists you will ever hear in your life. That's a fact. Right now in Chicago, I can name a bunch of GD rappers with talent that ain't got through the dough. Man, Ty Money a fucking monster, man. Come on, man. Ty Money a fucking monster, man. I'm a monster, nigga. I'm GD, nigga. What you talking about, man? What you talking about? I was rapping before Ty Money. It's just that Ty Money got a little further than me in the city. Fuck out of here, nigga. King Diesel, monster, nigga. Come on, man. We talk about real life lyrical beast. G Herbo ain't on shit. G Herbo can't out rap me, nigga. I smash his ass, boy. We talking about talent here. Fuck out of here, man. King Diesel will smash G Herbo on the track. FB Jup, FBG Duck was one more talented than, than, than fucking G Herbo. Niggas get through the dough, cause in Chicago it was always, they wouldn't let the GDs through. We was blackballed. Because of the way, just, just not the city, 
but the way the government looks at Larry Hoover. They know what he stands for. So that's why even when you say you GD, even if you don't rep the real GD movement and do it the right way and live out them laws, that ain't how the government looking at you. And Chicago got gatekeepers. All your little local niggas that be like lo lo local legends, but like they don't blow up. Every city got it. You notice that every city is those local legends who don't never blow up. Every city got those. Chicago do too. And these are the ones that's responsible for making sure that don't nobody else get through the door. But, but, but motherfuckers, that's not GD. And that's how it been. When we go into the 2000s, the best rapper come in Chicago in the early 2000s was Bump J. He got signed, but what was he? A four-corner hustler. The next big rapper in Chicago after Bump J was Bo Deal. He ended up getting signed with Gucci Mane and Brick Squad, and he brought a lot of them to Chicago. And You know what I'm saying? He opened up a big door for Chief Keef and all them. But what was Bo Deal, though? He's a vice lord. All right? We can say, you can't even say King Louie, because King Louie got a fucking record deal, and we never heard from King Louie again. Although he GD, you never heard from King Louie again. He got his record deal with Epic, and we ain't heard from King Louie since. So he never blew up. He not putting on for the city. He not dropping consecutive crispy classics like he could every fucking year to keep Chicago up there musically. No, he ain't. He made his money, got his teeth fixed, and went and sat down somewhere and chilled out. Come on, man. Facts. So now, who was left? Only motherfucker you had left was FBG Duck. Famous Dex is a GD, but once Famous Dex blew up, Famous Dex moved out to LA, stopped repping, stopped even being a part of the organization, stopped fucking with the, his day ones. He went out to LA and became a motherfucking skateboarder all of a sudden. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not even who Famous Dex was. He was a street nigga from Chicago. Then even more, he went out to LA and sold his soul. Now every time you look up his ass, in and out the rehabilitation center. That's what happened when you go out there and sell your soul. I'm trying to be somebody you not. You know what I'm So he don't count. He gone. He out the way. Now name another GD nigga that blew up. You can't. You can't, nigga. Now, let's move to the next big artist that came after motherfucking King Louis. Chief Keith. Chief Keith blew up in 2012, 2013. What was Chief Keith? BD. Chief Keith, BD, he blew up. Who blew up after Chief Keith? Lil Reese. What's Lil Reese? Lil Reese, Lil Reese is. They better not run up in here. Oh, that's swimming. Let get on. Lil Reese is BD. The next rapper to blow up after Lil Reese is Lil Dirk. And Lil Dirk is BD. Y'all see how many rappers I didn't name? That ain't no coincidence, y'all. I started at the 90s. We at 2013 now. Still ain't no GDs in the door. Like niggas don't exist in the city. Niggas more GDs than anything, nigga. GDs everywhere all over the fucking country, nigga. GD the biggest gang in America. Biggest organization in America next to the, next to the fucking Bloods and Crips. And really, Bloods and Crips is not bigger than GDs. You know why Bloods and Crips ain't don't outnumber GDs? Because Bloods is broken up into a million different gangs. You got Pyro Bloods, these type of Bloods. Crips is a million different gangs. You got these type of Crips. Nigga, GD's just GD, nigga. We ain't no, ain't no putting nothing before. Nigga. Ain't no I'm an insane GD. I'm renegade. Nigga, we ain't trying to hit none of that, nigga. GD or nothing, nigga. You say, nigga, be there. You can be all that you want to be. When we go in, you go in jail, nigga, your bitch ass gonna try to come over here for our protection, nigga. So you go ahead and drop that eye and drop that renegade, nigga, or you stay your ass on that side with them niggas. That's how I used to tell niggas in jail. On, on guys, nigga, come in on new. Man, G, I'm an S4. We ain't doing none of that up here, G. We doing one love, folks. We doing Larry Who, folks. We doing G's and D's, folks. We doing G's and D's, folks. We not doing nothing else on here, folks. That's why I should tell niggas and shit. So, I'm saying all this for a reason. Feel me like, listen, man. Now let's go to the next rapper that blew up after fucking Dirk. G Herbo. And what is he? A Blackstone. Then Lil Bibby blows up. Blackstone. Damn, it seems like the motherfucking Finballs got something against them GDs in Chicago. And don't let me, don't get me started on the DJs. DJ Ferris, them niggas Finball affiliated. 
Mickey House, the G Herbo manager, niggas Stones and Finball affiliated though. It don't matter if Herb EBK's ass still a black stone. See, that's, that's how I know y'all never been in jail. And Lil Herb ain't never really been in jail. Them niggas went in there for a few months and got out and was rapping. Real street niggas know. Because jail is about how it really supposed to go. You got all the real OGs that ain't never getting out in jail. Out in the streets, niggas, right. Niggas, everything in the streets. Come on, man. G Herb was a black stone. His ass getting locked up. He not gonna come in some EBK. Motherfucker gonna smash his ass. Fuck out of here. Nigga, don't let them niggas lie to you in they raps. Come on, man. You talking to a real, you dealing, you sitting here with a real nigga that was a, a fucking gang chief of the gangsters of the gangsters of the GDs when I was in jail, nigga. I wasn't no nigga just in jail, nigga. I had the whole Division 9 Super Max, boy. The whole Division 9, boy. I was talking to the big guys downstate when folks and it was coming through. I was talking to Lil Walt, Speedy. Come on, man, the real know them names. If you don't know them names, then you don't need to know them names. But if you one of them real guys, you know them niggas, our names is the niggas. What is you talking about? I ain't trying to hear that EBK shit. Then you just hear me say it's like a GD coming in talking about him. He an insane till he get his ass in jail, nigga. You going to drop that eye, folks. Or we going to beat your ass, G. Or you going to go on that side. You ain't going to throw these up, G, and talking about you putting no eye in front of nothing. You can do that shit when you get out of jail, nigga. Not in here, nigga, where it's real at. That's how it go in jail, nigga. So if G Herbo go to jail, he ain't finna come in some house. They what you? He come on a new. He come on a new. They what you is? Oh man, I'm I'm EBK. Nigga, that's your click in the world. Nigga, what you is, nigga? I'm Blackstone, nigga. That's what he gonna say. Up Blackstone, that mean finball rolling. You go over there with folks with them. We got a box for you. You good? You good? You good? You good, Mo? Cause because he a stone, man. You good, Mo? That's what they gonna tell him. You good, Mo? I come from this shit. You niggas just living on the internet. Vicariously through niggas like Lil Dirk Lines. Fuck out of here, nigga. Them niggas living through these niggas' lines. Boy, I smack the shit out the niggas. And them niggas know. Fuck out of here. That's why I don't respect them. Because I'm sitting here enlightening our people every day. And then you got dumb shit like that that be going on. You know what I'm saying? So I don't respect it. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day. Now after Lil Bibby. Who's the next rapper? Who can you name? Ain't none of our Dreezy in them out. Dreezy don't count. Tink don't count. Who you gonna name from Chicago next? Who you naming? Who you gonna say Chance the Rapper? You gonna say Chance? Guess what? Juice World, they all affiliated with Finball, boy. They Finball affiliated, nigga. Chance the rapper, fuck with, he stones, man. What is you talking about? Chance is Finball affiliated. Oh, man, everybody know that. Young Pappy would have blew up, but his ass is dead. Lil Jojo, dead. Polo G is a fucking, he's a fucking Cobra. He's another Finball, exactly. Polo G, the biggest rapper from Chicago right now. Him, look, it go Polo G, G Herbo, Lil Dirt. It don't get no bigger than them three names in Chicago. And all three of their ass is Finballs. Motherfucker said Lil Folk. Finball. Lil Folk called Lil Folk because he a folk on a hustler. Right, y'all just further making my point. Thank you for reminding me of how many niggas is Finballs around this bitch. Twister, Finball, Vice Lord affiliated, nigga. Niggas ain't gangsters. Niggas are not GDs. They not the folks. So I'm making my point about the guys. That's why... Ruger made a song called They Didn't Let the G's in the Dope. Common is Finball affiliated. He fuck with Blackstones. Go listen to Common old music. Blackstones, you know what I'm saying? That's why Common is so positive in his music because Common actually is in Jeff Ford's vision. Jeff Ford, the founder of the Blackstones. The Black Peace Stone Nation was another militant movement that they tried to make like it's a gang today. G heard one well, niggas don't represent stones, right? Real stones, I, I fuck with real stones. Real stones, they know all about the Moors and shit and all that, because that's a part of their literature, nigga. G heard well, don't represent no stones in no correct fashion, nigga. That ain't what Jeff Ford stood for. Jeff Ford would have never been EBK with his own. 
Just like somebody said, G Herbo is EBK. Right, what does EBK stand for? Everybody killer. EBK in Chicago stands for everybody killer, nigga. How the fuck can G Herbo say he's a black stone with millions of followers while Jeff Ford sits riding in ADX with Larry Hoover and Jeff Ford would have never said that? Jeff Ford would have never said he was EBK with his own people, nigga. Jeff Ford was everybody killer with the fucking government, boy. And I'm going to say that for fucking when I do my lecture on Jeff Ford, nigga. So that's my point I'm making. <coughs> Niggas is out here pretending to be us and they not us. Niggas are pretending to be BDs. They not us. Lil Durk is not no depiction of no real BD, man. A real BD, a real BD. Nah, I can't respect Take 600 no more. And I'm going to tell you why. A real BD... And I ain't never mentioned Take 600 name. I actually have respect for him until I seen the video. I don't, I don't, I don't. But look, real BDs know that BD stand for better development. So they're not out here trying to kill GDs and they're not out here trying to kill their own people. They're trying to better, they going there, they're after better development. They're not thinking like black disciples. They are after better development, which is what BD really stands for right now. Come on, man. Niggas is the imposters on the internet. Right. Stone say all is well. Who is the all they talking about? We the all. Who was the all Jeff Ford was talking about? His people. You know what I'm saying? The we the building blocks. That's why stones had bricks. Y'all had stones. Because you need stones to build. Jeff Ford was a good man. Like I said, I'm going to say Jeff Ford so crucial with it too. I'm going to save his for when I do, do it on him. <coughs> but. <coughs> Stop saying Dave Von Bennett. When y'all know goddamn well King Von was a BD. He made that known that he was beat. Okay. So, because you still to this day can't name one GD rapper, including myself, that has blew up from Chicago that let you know that the GDs are being blackballed in the music industry and definitely in Chicago, nigga. I just started in 1990. Definitely free chief my lead. I started from 1990, took y'all up to, to 2021. So that's how many years? From 90, that's 91. So that's 01, that's 10 years, 11, 20 years. That's 30 years, nigga. Come on, y'all. Y'all can stop acting like y'all ain't blackballers, B. It's been 31 years. Ain't no gangster from, disciple from Chicago ever blew up, man. Who y'all think y'all fooling in Chicago trying to act like it ain't like that? Now, somebody mentioned Taste 600. Let me mention his ass. I've seen that this is my issue with Tay 600. I don't even know him personally. And he don't know me. But I'm going to say this. Anytime i seen Tay 600 speak, to me, he came off as a real one. He, I never seen him dissing. I never seen him saying no other shit. But then I seen him do a video like, he like saying like, man, yeah, Fredo was BD. Anybody on Chief keeping them side, they all BD. But I seen Fredo, I mean, uh, Tay 600. He was like, Man, I'm seeing all these fake ass GD, everybody fake repping GD and this and that. And it wasn't just him, it was others saying it, but definitely him, right? My thing was like, damn, I ain't got no beef with him. But I peeped that that was like some fake hate and shit. Because I'm like, how can everybody sit here and get mad and say it's all these people repping GD that never repped it? Of course, it's a bunch of people that's going to once the song blow up. Now they throwing up the ranks. They don't know what GD mean. But if the song hot and it's catchy, now they're going to be saying they didn't let the GDs in the door. That's no different than the bloods. Niggas don't know the blood sign and what it means other than real bloods. Right? And there ain't no blood. But guess what? When Lil Wayne started Suwu ganging and Waka came out, boy, all of a sudden everybody was bloods, nigga. Fuck out of here, nigga. And guess what? I was GD then. But on my soul, I watched it all expire out, nigga. Lil Wayne came out first. I don't even know how he's a blood. He rapped his whole life. But niggas still believes him, though. All of a sudden, Lil Wayne pop out. He was the one repping blood the hardest and making it cool. He made pills cool. He made popping pills cool. He made sipping lean cool. That was all Lil Wayne, along with the lock and being a blood. Nigga, everybody start saying Suwu. Everybody, even in Chicago, niggas start making calling themselves Suwu. Come on, man. Nigga, when the Crips, when Nipsey Hussle died. How many people I seen throwing up the Crip sign and your ass ain't never been to L.A.? You know you ain't no motherfucking Crip. I seen females Nipsey Blue. You ain't even no Crip. I seen Russell Westbrook 
put up 20, 20, and 20 and talk about that for, for Nipsey because he was a rolling 60s. Forgetting the whole fact that rolling 60s is supposed to be a fucking deadly game. But that ain't stop America from repping Nipsey Blue and the Crips all of in the rolling 60s all of a sudden when Nipsey died. And ain't nobody say shit. Nobody said shit. When the BDs blew up, when Chief Keith came out, nigga half of Chicago flipped BD. I seen that all too. Nigga, before Chief Keith came out, nigga, it was more GDs than BDs. <coughs> nigga, Chief Keith came out, nigga. Everybody was GDK and BD all of a sudden. And this will blow me the most, y'all. The biggest motherfucker that did it was Lil Durk himself, y'all. Lil Durk used to be GD. Oh my God, B. This the shit that give me with y'all, man. This the shit that give me with the internet. Lil Durk used to be GD. His daddy is an outstanding member for us. Lil Durk. All right? Oh, man. That's what y'all don't be knowing, man. People from Chicago know that, though. But I'm making a point right now, okay? I'm making a point. And this all goes back to Larry Hoover. It's all Larry Hoover, y'all. This, this is a country worldwide thing. See what I'm saying? This is a country worldwide thing. Nigga, you rep that GD shit, boy, your ass. You got enemies in places you could never even think of. Facts. So, my thing is this, right? It was a lot of motherfuckers, man. That was GD, man. Like, you know, look, 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 let me show you, Larry Hoover, right, Larry Hoover is this like so bad in this country, that when Derrick Rose got caught throwing the ranks up, the NBA came down on him for that, check this out, y'all remember when Derrick Rose did this, y'all, that's Derrick Rose throwing up GD right there, because Derrick Rose GD, he come from Inglewood, that's GD, they GD affiliated, Derrick Rose GD affiliated, but when Derrick Rose, when this picture came out, nigga, the NBA came down on his ass. Meanwhile, but it was okay for Russell Westbrook to put up 20, 20, and 20 on national TV and then say, I did that for Nip, for Nipsey, for the rolling 60s. And not get suspended for promoting a gang, that is a so-called gang on national TV. Shouldn't that hurt the NBA endorsements? None of that happened, nigga. Pay attention, nigga. Russell Westbrook repped that shit. And then motherfucking, nothing happened to him. But this how, this how bad they don't like Larry Hoover, though. See what I'm saying? <coughs> Derrick Rose throw up Larry Hoover shit. Look at him. <coughs> now, look. A lot of these niggas. Now, Polo G, he ain't no false flagger. He always going to drop them ranks and his ass to Cobra. And I respect that about Polo G. But a lot of these niggas, a lot of these niggas, you know what I'm saying? That go Lil Durk right there. I'm not trying to hit nothing. Throwing up the ranks. That's Lil Durk right there throwing up GD. I ain't trying to hear shit, nigga. See, niggas forget. Niggas forget. And I mean, you can do this with a lot of niggas. That's Lil Boo. You know what I'm saying? That was from 600 that throwing up GD. They got killed in a gang war. All right? But he flipped. He ended up being BD. This all came out the Chief Key. Now, King Von, they say King Von used to be GD. And then he became BD. All right? We can go on and on. They go Ty Dow, Chief Keith. He ended up getting killed. Chief Keith, BD crazy. When Ty Dow blew up, everybody knew him for being a BD. That's because niggas ain't know that before Chief Keith's song came out, nigga. Everybody was GD. Everybody was GD. And then Chief Keith blew up, and niggas wanted to get on. So now everybody started becoming BD and GDK. 
even 600 Breezy used to be GD. Come on, y'all. Look at this, man. Look at this, y'all. Look at these niggas throwing up the ranks. Look, that's 600 Breezy. That's Lil Dirt. Y'all see what I'm saying? I don't lie about shit. And that's all pre, that's all pre Chief Keith, y'all. Then Chief Keith blew up and since he had the money, everybody wanna flip BD all of a sudden. That's why I don't be respecting these niggas. I know the real, y'all. I'm from shit. I'm from here, y'all. So you gotta understand, I don't be just speaking on shit. I know niggas is niggas is the worst type of nigga. The worst type of individual you could ever be, man. Alright? So my point is this though. Why all of a sudden, since the GDs get one song, now niggas is, oh man, Joe, you know, I feel like it's a lot of bunch of fake GDs, you know, repping that GD shit, you know. Blah, blah. Why does that matter? Nobody said that when Chief Keith came out in the whole Chicago flip. Nobody said that when Chief Keith came out in the whole Chicago flip BD. Everybody was GD before Don't Like came out. Before Don't Like came out, everybody was GD. Only nigga that's a big rapper, I'm talking about the rappers. The only that's big that's known. Only big rapper that ain't flip up, Polo G. He was always that. Come on, man. Everybody was GD until I Don't Like came out. Look, what more evidence do you need? Come on, man. Facts, like, making my points, right? So, y'all get my point. But now the GDs get one song, and now it's a big thing in Chicago. And not just Chicago, is spreading. Like, niggas like, man, it's all these fake GD. All that has to do with is Larry Hoover, y'all. <laughs> Nothing else. Simply Larry Hoover, y'all. Like, his vision of what he stood for, they will never let a GD shine in this bitch. Period. Now. Let's connect more dots. Let's connect more dots. Let's close that. Let's close that. Let's connect more dots. Okay. So, Larry Hoover. He had a certain concept, right? His concept was for ideology, organization, and aid and assistance our brothers of the struggle and all righteous endeavors. That didn't just apply to, like, people that was in the organization. That applied to our community as a whole, because that's what was the fight was about. Yeah. Originally. This is the main thing that right now promotes a lot of the negative energy in Chicago. All right? The BDGD Warriors. Nobody else. Now, BD has the BDs have a king called David Barksdale. Okay? And he started the BDs. But not just the BDs, the disciples. Okay? Originally, when he when he when when David Barksdale, who was also awoke he got killed too, I think by the police in a shootout or some shit or some shit. But he died like in the 60s. It was David Barksdale, Larry Hoover, and Shorty Freeman. It was BGDN. King David is actually everybody's king if you call yourself a disciple. Facts, so like people that say they GDs and BDs, because that's like Bloods and Crips Warren. BDs and Jesus are literally the same thing, all right? But when David Barksdale got killed because the police sent his power, that, that, that just left three people, three of, three of his top lieutenants, Larry Hoover, Booney Black, and David Barksdale. These were all militant-minded individuals. Fuck how they get painted in the media. They original intent was on some militant shit, all right? So... <coughs> Shorty Freeman took the B and the D, Black Disciple. Larry Hoover took the G and the D, you know what I'm saying? Gangster Disciples, which later became Growth for Development, right? Booney Black took the B and the G, and they became Black Gangsters. But what has to be, what has to be understood is 
the term black. They use black and they use disciple for a reason. <coughs> for a reason, y'all. Because Larry Hoover's fight was with the system. The oppressors. Like I showed y'all earlier, he never killed nobody. They have nobody that can say he personally killed. So he set out for a murder that, 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 they, that they said that they said he did. BG stands for black gangsters. The reason a lot of people, if you're not from Chicago, never heard of black gangsters, all right, is just simply due to the fact, due to the fact that there is no big rapper that's a black gangster from that's blew up. So you don't know black gangsters, but they knew breeze. They exist. They in Chicago. All right. So <laughs> this whole nation was concocted by three kings, three gods with a vision. That's what I'm trying to get y'all to see. So Larry Hoover literally is sitting in jail doing six life sentences because they feared that if they was to let him out right now, he still has the same mentality. But even more, now he's been in jail all them years. And he still got a lot of power. So right now, if they let Larry Hoover out, it's a lot of people that would listen to him. Believe it or not. And that would end a lot of shit in the streets. You hear me? They don't want that. With the leaders locked up and out the way, the, the, the elites can control the, the subunits of the organization and turn them into gangs. Give them drugs, give them guns, get them to kill each other. And then stand back and say, hey, now let's come up with laws for drugs. Now they got a reason to put you in jail, in their jails. Now let's come up with laws for guns. See what I'm saying? But this is all a setup. It's all part of their plan. Larry Hoover is an actual political prisoner, though. He's not a gang leader. But look at how they talk about him, though. And it's basically because, like I say, you got these dumbass GDs and BDs out here right now to this day. They just killing each other like a motherfucker. And killing people and robbing people and selling drugs. And then they say, then they rep GD or BD. So it makes it seem like, oh, okay, well, shit, that's what they about. No. No. Honestly, not. Honestly, not. All right? That's just like in this university right here. Those who've been in this university, y'all know my vision and what I stand for, what I represent, right? But the elites would love to do something to me, right? And then so all y'all can fall. I, like We cut the head off. Now we can make up all type of narratives. And everybody in the university going to start beefing with each other. And there we go. And then now everybody that's saying they Anunakai gods, let's say 20 years pass. I'm locked up. Ain't nobody out there to tell the people to, what, Anun what Anunnaki gods really about. Now, 20 years from now. You got shorties running around talking about they Anunnaki guys, but they killing motherfuckers. And then they got me listed as a fucking like. That's what they did to Larry Hoover, man. Like, this is what I'm showing you. Feel me? Like, the, 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 the deeper picture of a political prisoner. You know what I'm saying? Like, you cannot look at Larry Hoover as a gang leader or a gang member or any of that because he was never at that. Those are lies. All right? Those are lies. The same go for Asada Shakur. Tukey Williams, even Tukey Williams, like, why did they didn't, they didn't want to let Tukey Williams out? That was another political prisoner, gifted, intelligent, writing books. They would never let him out because they knew what, what would happen if they let him out. They executed that man. These are leaders. Do you know how many GDs it is in the world? Boy, if they let Larry Hoover out, you talking, boy, that's all he got. It's probably about 10 million GDs. Boy, that's a lot of power. It's 10 million. That's a lot of power for one person now. Shit, I'm GD. Imagine if Larry got out and just hit me up. Look how many people I got under me. Now they listen to me. Now you got other people that's, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just painting a picture. You know what I'm saying? Just to enforce a small example. You know what I'm saying? Like, our struggle is to grow and develop, and that wasn't just for if you was a member. That's for our people. Like, <coughs> for our people to grow, develop, look, listen, learn. Like, does that sound like gang literature to y'all? Does that sound like gang literature to y'all? Like, y'all would be surprised to read our blueprint. Y'all would. Y'all would, like, you'd be like, damn, this, what the fuck? This don't sound like no criminal shit. We got real pieces or stories 
that ought to be applied to everyday life. I'll give you one, for example. We have a piece in our organization that is called Okay, so we got a piece in our organization. This is Larry Hoover's vision. This is what he teaches. These are Larry lessons. That's why I be like free Larry or real members that know no say free Larry or free the old man. All right? Free the honorable chairman, right? Do gangs have chairmans? No. Companies have chairmans. Organizations have chairmans. You see what I'm saying? The media have a call us, you know? But we got a piece that Larry Hoover and them came up with. It's called the three M's. Small mind, mediocre mind, great mind. And it goes just like this. Small minds discuss people. Mediocre minds discuss things. But great minds discuss ideas. That's part of Larry's vision. It's called the three minds. Three M's. Which stands for the three minds. That's in his literature. You know how many GDs don't know that? Did I just say that? They won't know that? Some will. Some won't. See what I'm saying? If they really, if they really in tune, they're gonna know that. But if they if they like house Negroes who vibrating low, <coughs> you ask, they ask, let me hear the three M's. Let me hear the three M's. They gonna be like, money Mac murder. That's the old testament, nigga. What's the new testament? We got testaments to our literature. You see what I'm saying? This is why when I was in jail, they gave me so much rank in the organization. Because they I actually represent that. So they're like, who better to lead the youth than him? And that's why they gave me that slot in the jail. And I was teaching niggas what this shit was about. And niggas was like, oh, yeah. I'm like, that's why you got to work out Monday, Wednesday, Friday. This is why, literally, in, in, like if you a GD, niggas will tell you in jail, we get trained like military. All GDs got to work out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And you in, if you in jail, a motherfucker going to beat your ass. If you a GD, you can't even be musty. That's one of our rules. Number nine, no, hi, no bad hygiene. Let your ass walk around smelling musty and you you a GD and you in jail, nigga beat your ass to pull you on charges for that. So does that sound like a gang to you or does that sound like an older elderly guy that's trying to teach his younger guys how to walk through life? You see what I'm saying? Come on, man. Y'all have no clue how, who, how intelligent Larry Bernard Hoover is, man. The little shit I just said, the three, I ain't finna recite all our shit on here. I, I'll let you hear enough. But the three M's. You get what I'm saying? Come on, man. Does that sound like the, that would come from the mind of a gang leader, nigga? Or does that sound like that would come from the mind of an intelligent intellect? I haven't seen niggas in the comments coming in. That's raw. I said that ain't no raw. That's our literature. That's what we live by every day. Nigga, I used to love hitting niggas with that piece like, nigga, come on, new. You one of these? Let me hit the three M's. That's a basic. It get deeper than that. We got whole pledges. Whole, like, it get way deeper than that. This who Larry Hoover is. Straight, intelligent, intellect God who has been framed, man. Come on, man. And with nobody out there to speak up for him, which I'm doing today, on, on seven four day, you see what I'm saying? On growth and development day, you feel me? It's because, you know, that's the only narrative you've ever heard of Larry Hoover is the shit they tell you in the media. That's a fucking lie. It's just no one God should have all that power. So if they let him out, it's just too many GDs. The GDs is the biggest gang on the planet or organization on the planet. It's then turned to a gang now. Shit, now it has. Shit, like, and niggas, is GDs don't even kick it, niggas don't talk. It's some whole other shit now. That's why I don't even deal with it. I be strictly focused on living the vision every day and helping my people. I don't even, I don't go link up with niggas who throw forks up. Just because you throw the forks up don't even mean you really one of the guys. I don't even need, <coughs> I'm looking at how you living every day. <coughs> are you practicing these principles that the Honorable Chairman Larry Hoover instilled in us? Or are you just out here capping like you us? No, man. And that's why when trolls get in here and try to be like, I'm being biased when I say Lil Durk didn't sacrifice somebody. I'm be being honest. I'm not finna lie to make y'all feel better, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I know where it really come from and what it's about. So. Just let y'all know. That. 
We got many, many, many individuals who have tried to make a change in this country in their own little way. And some of them are militant. And when you're militant, the elites get scared because they think about how we were anciently. They know we ancient beings. So they get scared. You feel me? So then they create these titles. Like, you don't think they gonna, they would try to call me some terrorist, all that? Yes. That's what they do to try to move people away from people that have power to sway a lot of people. Mm -hmm. well, I said, I would never let them take me to jail. They would try to take me where Larry Hoover at. I got too much. My soul too strong. What I look like? That's why I said I'd never let them kidnap me. You know what it is with me. Nigga, we gonna get to it. And that's just what it is. That's just what it is. I can't, I can't go no other way. That's how Osceola got hit. Osceola, one of the leaders of the Florida Seminoles, did that same dumb shit. We was at war. The Florida Seminoles was at war with the Spanish, right? They was fucking the Spanish up. So, to trick the fucking Florida Seminoles out of, so that they could beat them, the Spanish came out with a treaty, a white flag. They waved it. They told the Seminoles, we want a truce, we want a truce. Osceola was the leader of the Seminoles. He said, okay, cool. Osceola said he went to the dinner, and when he got to the fucking dinner, they arrested his goofy ass. Seminoles lose the whole fucking war. You never have Florida today. I'm not going for that type of shit, man. I seen it happen twice. First time it happened, it was with Shaka. Shaka Zulu. The Zulu warriors was fucking them people up. So what did the Spanish do? <coughs> the white racists who had came to enslave the Zulu war, the Zulu tribe and take their land could not defeat the Zulu warrior because Shaka was so militant and his formations were so fucking cold. And the Zulus, they had a DA open, so they had that stamina, nigga. They that's what the Zulu was the Zulus were feared because of their stamina and their ability to form these big ass formations and come from all sides at one time. The Zulu. Like, so the, the Spanish feared them. Yeah, but you're not gonna eat so much of that rice. You want to eat me some more fruit. But the Zulu, they feared them, y'all. Thanks, man. They feared them. <coughs> I took that lemon juice and baker soda. You hear me, babe? I'm like, oh, this shit be coming up the whole time I'm on live. And I feel way better. I just, I'm everything coming out. That's exactly what I need. The turmeric. You want the turmeric shot? What you talking about? Okay, cool. I love you, babe. Beautifulness. So, basically, that's what happened to Osceola, y'all. Osceola fucking tried to go meet up with the Spanish at a fucking dinner because they waved the white flag and they tricked his ass and he went and they motherfucking captured him. They did the same thing to Shaka Zulu. <clears throat> so I know one thing I know about the oppressors. That's why y'all got to study history. It repeats itself. Anytime the oppressors feel like they can't defeat you, they will pretend to wave a flag of peace and treaty to lower your defensive. They do it today. They see us rising. Now they want to give us a black president. They see us rising. They see us rising. Now, now they want to do some shit. These blueberries be hitting. They see us rising. Now they want out there giving us a law. Like, the, like last month. We rising. Now they want to make Juneteenth a holiday all these years. That's what they do. So that, it's, so that some of us can be like, yeah, y'all ain't that bad. You got to study history. You hear me? And you got to know that we cannot never forget about our political prisoners that are still locked up right now. God, we got gods and goddesses who are still locked up from 
their fight and their contributions they made to the struggle from the fucking 1960s and 70s and 80s, y'all. Real life shit, man. Free all the political prisons, man. But this was my first one, y'all. I got nine more episodes coming. Also, I'm not going to be public no more this week. Only on my website. So y'all need to go sign up. I got good drop, the good downloads coming this week. We're going to start with my History of Africa lecture. I got a lecture coming up on mosquitoes, flies. We going in. All right, so y'all come to the website, www.theuci.online. I just gave y'all three lectures in one today. You get what I'm saying? Three separate lectures in one. We talked about 4th of July, where it came from. We talked about Shikari Richardson for a second. And we dove into the Honorable Chairman and Political Prince of Larry Hoover, who was locked up at ABX, free him. But understand this is the war that we will win, y'all. I hope you'll be able to sit here and gain some insight today. There's no such thing as gangs. But just remember that when you see these Bloods and these Crips and these GZs and BDs, most of the people that's rapping gangs today is kids. They all under 19, 18. They don't know what that shit is about they're a part of. Just like we didn't know when we was out there. So you just got to know that's what I'm talking to y'all so you can understand why these gangs originated. They were militia groups formed in the 50s and 60s to fight against the oppressors, man. All right? Go look into, uh, go look into the Black Peace Stones versus the Black Panthers. The feds were sending all type of bullshit toward them trying to get the Peace Stones to war with the fucking Black Panthers. And I, and I told you, remember, they've always been like that. They did that to us, remember, here in the beginning. They used our own, the Moors, to war with us. They didn't defeat us on their own. They had hella help. And to this day, they still use our own to defeat us. That's why they pay them celebrities good money to mislead motherfuckers. All right? So, this is why when Mr. Charleston White... I don't know if you watch my lecture still. I ain't talked to Charleston White in a minute. We actually got each other number, but I ain't talked to him in a minute. That was like months ago, way back in March. So, Mr. Charleston White, if you watch my lectures, when you said Lil Durk was an agent of darkness, you don't even know how deep you hit. You don't even know how deep you hit. You was more than on point. Because that's a spiritual level when you get to say agent and you talking about of darkness. That's spiritual ass. That's witchcraft. That, that them BDs involved in Chicago. All right, and not just them, a lot of these big entertainers. All right, so understand the world. Get the message, get the download. My album coming up, 9-9, I'm dropping my album, 9-9, y'all. Y'all know I'm going to say the same, 9-9. We 9 at the bin, so the album had to drop on them 9. It's all about the energy for me. It's all about the energy for me, Reflexiations. You dick. Album on the way. I'm not playing with you niggas. I'm going to go ahead and slaughter the rap niggas. And give it a high frequency. Because I know they ass fake. You know what I'm saying? I, and just maybe through the music, I can gain more people through the music. Because I can touch more of the shorties that need to hear that. Some shorties ain't trying to say hear me lecturing. But they ain't listen to that shit over a beat. So that's what I'm on. Anybody, somebody said just don't sell out. Why, what do you mean don't sell out, nigga? I, it's just me, nigga. My family, nigga. You ain't gonna never see me on motherfucking good, good, a, good M America or none of that. So you ain't never gonna work with me something out, nigga. Did you see me at the BET Awards, nigga? You ain't gonna never see me there. Period. I took a picture with a white engineer. You had, I had, I had people talking about, oh, he got a white engineer. Yes, nigga, I never said I was racist, nigga. My engineer is white. But where y'all went wrong at, that's not the only engineer I work with. That's the engineer I worked with on that record. That's what make motherfuckers so silly, y'all. You know, niggas wanna say something. He got a white engineer. Did you get the message in the music? See what I'm saying? Motherfuckers say anything to get around the message or anything to get around the, 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 the talent. I've already been blackballed. Why you got to come on my little YouTube channel with my little 33,000 subscribers and try to further blackball me? I've already been blackballed out the industry. Damn, look, like, can I have my little, can I get my little moment that I just love doing what I do? You feel me? Like, nigga, that shit make me happy. Nigga, I love making music. Nigga, I ain't finna just stop because... Fuck out of here, nigga. All the contributions I, I make to humanity and yeah, humanity and the gods and goddesses, nigga. And I can't do me. I can't have a little leisure time for me. You know what I'm saying? No, I can't have a little leisure time for me. Fuck out of here, nigga. And I'm teaching niggas through the music. I ain't trying to hear shit. I'm gonna drop me an ass shaker too. If y'all think I'm not gonna drop me no ass shaker, I'm letting y'all know right now. I'm definitely gonna drop me an ass shaker. I'm gonna have it at least once. So what's an ass shaker? <clears throat> an ass shaker video just mean like 
I gotta have a video with a bunch of goddesses going crazy in that bitch. Feel me? But we can't not, we can't listen. We can't, we can't not deny the fact that we been dancing. Nigga, we been dancing, we been twerking. Go look at ancient Africa dances, nigga, in Jamaica. Nigga, that's twerking and all that. Dance hall, what you think that is? We been doing that. So I can highlight that because I actually uplift our goddesses. So they know I'm not showing that. And I'm not hiring no models with no fake bodies. I'm not highlighting none of that fake shit, Joe. Letting you know now. I'm not highlighting no fake shit. But don't get in my shit and expect me to be on some common shit neither. I'm not common. I'm, I'm more gangster than common, nigga. I come from a whole different background than common, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm a warrior, G. I was really thugging in the streets, man. So I know I left that alone. That don't mean that shit ain't still in my essence. It's still in me. It'll never, you can never, you can never not be who you are. You know what I'm saying? No matter where you go, you are what you are, player. Ain't that what Jay-Z said? That's gonna be my caption on my next picture on Instagram tomorrow. Watch. Y'all gonna wake up to it. It's gonna, I'm gonna put a raw ass picture up or something to caption it. That's the realest shit Jay-Z ever said. Cause I ain't gonna lie, Jay-Z said a lot of real shit in his lyrics, and I love his business mind. But him selling that and doing what he did later on in his career, I can't, I don't fuck with that. But far as like, when that nigga said, uh, he said, no matter where you go, you are what you are, player. And you can try to change, but that's just the top layer. Man, you was who you was before you got here. You know what I'm saying? Only, only, only the Ananuki goddesses can judge me. So I'm gone. Either love me, either understand me, or leave me alone. Right, yeah, that's my caption tomorrow. I'm letting y'all know right now in, in advance, nigga. That's real shit, nigga. No matter where you go, you are what you are, player. So, like, and I've never heard that. Like, I don't know how y'all get that. I'm an X street nigga. He's the intellect. So I'm, a, I'm a bunch of everything. But I'm on the right path. I got the, I know who the enemy is. So you really should commend me for growing. Because a lot of motherfuckers ain't grew. Y'all never grew. You know what I'm saying? And niggas that be in the comments judging me, you ain't never grew. Can you even sit here and admit your flaws? Can you even sit here and admit your wrongs? You know, you they can't do it. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm in the position I'm in and you sitting at home watching me. See what I'm saying? Because I actually sat with myself. And I don't try to be somebody I'm not. And I give back to people every day. And I have a pure spirit and soul. I genuinely care about what I'm doing. I'm not doing it. I'm not faking or none of that. Feel me? And I, and I be honest with the people. I'm honest with myself. I'm comfortable in my avatar, nigga. I ain't putting on no front. Feel me? If you can't get on Instagram without, without putting your lashes and your nails on, you being fake, goddess. You and your lower self. If you can't get on IG without putting some jewelry or some fresh shit on, God, you being fake. You and your lower self. Nigga, I give them this bitch regular. Nigga can't tell me shit. Motherfuckers wouldn't have got on here unless they shit was braided to the back with a fresh, crispy taper lining. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully y'all got the lesson, man. <coughs> I know the real guys did. The real university, y'all know I'm never talking to y'all. Especially those who are on the website and those who are really like, you might not be on the website, but you really keep up with it. Yeah, you know what's real with me. But also, I want y'all to know, I'm not acting funny on Instagram. I am still blocked from going live on Instagram, y'all. Ever since I gave that $1,000 away, that was three weeks ago. I ain't never been blocked that long. So it made me not ever want to do it again now, y'all. Once If they do give me my Instagram live back, y'all, can somebody please screen record this? Why ain't none of you bloggers letting it be known that Rashad Jamal is still blocked from going live? Gee, fuck with me like I fuck with y'all. Y'all screen record all my other shit. And then I noticed too, I don't see no bloggers screen recording the, the, the black power moves. Why ain't y'all trying to spread all the messages? That's crazy. It's all good though. I already know how it be. Well, why y'all ain't been? Why ain't nobody's make screen recording it like I oh, man? You know God still can't go live on Instagram. You feel me? Ain't nobody highlighting that shit like damn. God gave away a thousand dollars and got blocked from going live for, and he still can't go. Nigga, every time I get on that bitch, you say you you are temporarily blocked. Damn, this is a long ass temporary. What type of temporary this is? So I'm letting y'all know right now. I'm never giving y'all shit else. I'm not blaming y'all, but I don't know who did it. But if the elite's plan was to make Rashad Jamal never give out another dollar, you better believe it fucking worked, nigga. Nigga, I'd have had posts deleted. I'd have been on live actually saying shit about the elites and got blocked. And I was only blocked for four or five days. And it made sense to me. Oh, they blocked me for, give, for trying to give back to my community, y'all. They don't want me to raise the vibration. That day, we literally ain't talk about nothing, no nothing, and got blocked. I might not never get my live back. Ain't no telling. So that's why y'all gonna have to come to the website or catch me when I'm on here. But 
ain't no way everybody should know that neither. Because there's just too many people still asking, hey, man, you blocked from going live? You must have just started following me yesterday. You had to. Can somebody please let the world know that Rashad Jamal is still blocked for giving money away? But when Lil Baby passed out shoes and, and, and Kodak Black gave out air conditioners to his hood, them niggas ain't get blocked. They ain't get blocked. Can somebody up on Instagram let me know? I mean, we know what it really is. Y'all know I'm being funny. But can somebody on Instagram let us know? Why is Rashad Jamal blocked for... All he did was give back, give $1,000 to his community that anybody could have won. And they like, I picked the person. I picked the number. I picked the number, nigga. Anybody could have won that. You feel me? Anybody could have won that. Yeah, y'all, so, you know, I can't be, you know what I'm saying? Well, y'all, I'm an example of you really can't win for you, for losing, y'all. Let me be an example that you cannot win for losing. So don't 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 try to please people. Just do you. So now I'm going to be like that. I don't want to hear shit, nigga. Ain't no, damn, he changed. He, da, da, da. I ain't changed shit. I just, I know who really fuck with me, and I know who don't. I know on Instagram that y'all don't fuck with me like that. Somebody did it. I don't know who, but guess what? Then we all have to pay for it. I can't go live. And you know how irritating that is? Sometimes I don't want to give a whole lecture about some shit. I could just go live and say it real quick. But not anymore. Like what? That shit irritating for me. I'm an intellect. We already been on here. Damn, this six hours straight. You can't give me no motherfucking one minute. This is the God. I, I, need, I need unlimited time to just flow. So, yeah, y'all. So... I'm just letting y'all know, if y'all ain't been sending no lectures on Instagram, that's why. That's why I'm posting my music and I'm posting pictures. And I'm still teaching y'all, but I, what y'all want me to do? Make an a hour lecture video and post it? Like, it don't work like that. But peace to God's God's upon the Kai. Now we rise. One.